and welcome everybody. I'm really glad you could join us for the Arcane Ward Chapter 2 here on a beautiful evening slash morning of a Wednesday. Thank you for joining us. God, it feels like we're going into a connection now. You and I. <laughs> Think of a number. And in between uh, 1 and 40. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I could never get that right. Hello! Hello, 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 hello. Yeah, I love it when my players are there going, please, Joe, stop talking. This is just so wrong. It was so good. It was so good. I was, I was feeling very meditative all of a sudden. It was just, I was like, this is this is exactly what's going on in my head when you're talking in this voice with this music. And it's, it, am I dreaming this? Am I hallucinating this? <laughs> oh, well, well I'll, I'll say again, welcome everyone to... Uh, not the meditation zone to the arcade war chapter two um it's been a, quite a while since we've been able to get these people together to continue this this little story of ours um but i think it's going to be a, a wonderful session very nice very nice session that right Stuart? it could be a really nice session very nice very just nice not <laughs> ominous at all <laughs> Uh, I am going to say massive love to High Five Dog. Um, I've heard that this might be your last time with us um, for a little while. So um, we're going to have a little way for you to spend your points, my friend. So uh, as, you, as we do on all of our different streams, we have available with bombs so you can give inspirations to the different characters and different players, allowing them to get advantage throughout. Of course, this means you can only have one at a time which is standard uh, but if you do want to give your your favorite players or your favorite characters advantage pop down to your points down at the bottom of the chat and you can award them uh, some bombs which will appear like a small bomb that looks like let me see if I can get this right this or this Good. Oh, that's good. That yeah, was that smooth. That was real smooth, wasn't it? And, and, <laughs> and true to form, High Five Dog has already given you inspiration, Joe. Ah, look at that. Because <laughs> it's my dog. Thanks, mate. I appreciate it. Um, but it's there if you need it, so that would be good. So, uh, do you want to pop around very quickly and allow our players to in reintroduce their characters and see how they're doing today um, and see how they're feeling about moving forward in this story as well? So, I'm going to pop over to Dan. How are you doing, my friend? I am good. I'm uh, doing a bit of recovering from a bit of an epic camping trip that I had this weekend. And I thought, you know what? It's far too much fun to just go camping. It's intense enough to just go camping. I'm going to manage a 50 person team whilst I'm there as well. So that was uh, that was quite intense and frazzling for the brain. Um, but yeah, I'm doing all right. I'm glad to be uh, to be back on stream. How are you, Joe? I'm very well. Thank you very much. I also am uh, recovering. <laughs> um, but yes, I'm very, very well, thank you. And tell us about Illustrious Montgomery. Uh, so Illustrious Montgomery is a Furbolg uh, Twilight <laughs> Cleric, um, kind of a, a hider in plain sight of the Far Lights. Um, masquerading is very much part of the Empire as a speaker um, and is a, has a real um, has a real sense of self when it comes to right and wrong, good and bad, and kindness. Kindness is very important to them. Mm -hmm. And they can uh, also change their shape as well, which I think has been quite important in the last session as well. Yeah, a bit of fur bulb magic can, uh, yeah, can disguise self and also slightly change uh, change size and shape as well to uh, to blend in, because otherwise he'd be massive. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in this party. I mean, he is yeah, a towering yeah, above. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you may have also noticed that we've got little level fives next to our names because we decided, oh, I decided this afternoon to give everybody a level uh, level up. Um, so it'd be great to find out what, what extra things that you've picked up, Dan, uh, in your fifth level. Yes, so I so uh, for the most part, being a Twilight Cleric, um, I picked up two spells for free. Those two spells are, hold please. Um, oh, maybe they didn't add automatically. That's a shame. Um, I will double check them and, uh, and come back to you. But I've also got two level three spell slots. Um, so I've had a chance to change some things over. I also think as a cleric, I can change, I can pick my spells every day. Is that right? Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. I shall be having a little look at that whilst all you guys keep talking. <laughs> um, and uh, and yeah, and I've uh, upgraded my channel divinity as well to uh, destroy undead. Great. Uh, but I'm sure, you know, that's, we're never going to need to use that. Nah. That's, that's, it's going to be fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> So, you know, it never, ever 
ever sort of instills you with a sense of ill ease when your DM tries to level you up two hours before a session. Yeah. And that's just that it's like, oh, thanks. Thanks. That's not ominous. It's really kind. Yeah. Yeah. Pleasant. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it'd be fine. It was one of those moments of like, if I let this go on, everyone will die. So I better just just see that. And then I can go a little bit crazier and then it'll be all right. Well, it's just yeah. fine. We, we just we just talk round people and convince them that they're 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 friends and we're guards. Literally, so. that's all you guys do, which is the best tactic ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna pop over to um go go slightly back in time and say good morning, Melissa. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so um yes, yeah, so tell us about Clove. Yeah, Clove is a halfling circle of the land druid uh, from the coast. So she's a fisherwoman who uh, has kind of found herself first in the big city for the first time and now out on this adventure. And I think she's very much feeling in over her head, but she's going to do her best. (laughs) Yeah, of course, you you started to create quite um, a a relationship with Chuna, the child, in the last session. Um, being the one to sort of like take the hand the most, I think, throughout. Um, so I think there's a sort of thing that's starting to, to connect there, which I think is going to be quite fun to kind of play cool. with. Um, but of course, last session, yeah, way in the city, never really been in the city before, stomping in puddles and running away from guards, which has been fun. Yeah, yeah, and maybe, you know, casting some, not being super subtle about things. She's just like trying to, <laughs> trying to help and not always sure how to do it in the best way, but she's, she wants to. Yeah. And then going up into fifth level of Circle of the Land, what do you get hold of at fifth level? So I get some really useful uh, spells as a coastal druid in, as we <laughs> go off into the land. Uh, I've got water breathing and water walk, which is going to be really, really handy. Um, but I also got a couple other level three spells that I think will be fun. And yeah, as a prepared caster, I kind of switch some things around and... Uh, yeah, we'll see. I uh, I also might actually use a wild shape slot today. Who knows? Mm. Fun druid things. That could be fun. That would be really, really cool. Oh, nice. Okay, we'll, we'll jump back over as we're now in the, what I'm going to call the, the short contingents of the party. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as we pop into the other halfling uh, and see how Stuart's doing. How are you doing, Stuart? You just see the camera go down now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing good, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if I've done anything actually interesting to report in. Probably not, just endless amounts of D&D as per usual. Yeah. yeah. So what you, is it running? Delightful. Running or playing? Um, but both running and playing. So yesterday we had a pretty kind of intense session of uh, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, which is, I think we're now into session 23 of that. Ooh. And yet we're still in chapter two. Thank you, Wizards of the Coast. Thank you for a really balanced kind of structure. Um, <laughs> and then we're also running uh, Tyranny of Dragons, which we have I think we're now approaching like a year into. And we're just getting to the end of Horde of Dragon Queen. So it's like wow. epic ones that are still going on. And so I'm like just trying to focus and just look up for the light at the end of the tunnel of these campaigns and just hope that I survive it to the end, because I never do. <laughs> no, no, you don't, ever. <laughs> no. no. Um, but tell us about Loretta. So Loretta um, is a quite ballsy uh, deck space fighter who's from Danith, very kind of anti-authoritarian and leveling up means that she's now got an extra attack, which is quite nice. Probably a learnt lesson from having had her ass handed to her last session and getting knocked down. So I think she's probably kind of mentally ruminating on that and is probably swiping with the swords as she's running away now, just thinking, how can I, how can I get better, get faster, never have that happen again. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, yeah, because now level five you get some really cool stuff you get lots of different bits mm-hmm. um most important of which is of course extra attack which is just really yes. cool. so uh that's fantastic and you're a battle master right yes yeah. so i think the extra attack combined with uh those superiority die is going to be quite useful yeah man. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. so moving over from the light but we move over to the forest name of the group um <laughs> hello <laughs> hello how you doing rowan you good <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm good. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right. I've done, what have I been doing? Um, um, oh, I worked a wedding on the weekend and moved a lot of hay around, which has made me feel extremely strong and ready and not at all exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. Was it uh, you working the wedding or was it uh, somebody that you were... Or you working were... the wedding, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. For, for 50 bales of hay mm -hmm. that we had to just sort of do, do manually because not really thought that through. Yeah, I thought but you it was, was beautiful. I, when, it was you said, nice. when you said 450 um, bales of hay, I thought that was your payment. <laughs> Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I've really entered into a sort of fantasy realm now where I, I demand payment in useful goods and services. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens when you work a unicorn wedding yeah <laughs> yeah exactly too much to do uh a very similar uh to nora really in that way um so tell us a little bit about nora exactly so nora is a gnome uh rogue thief so she's very slippy and sneaky and small uh, despite being a forest gnome she's actually not spent a huge amount of time uh outside of the city so this is going to be a, a pretty interesting experience for her coming up uh she used her her time on the run on the lamb with this motley crew to uh just get a little bit sneakier and and harder to hit i think she saw loretta go down and thought no thanks so uh yeah she's gained uh uncanny dodge in game turns and i got some extra extra sneaky Sneaky attacks. Extra sneaky die attacks. Yeah. yeah. Death, death dice. So that's really cool. So we've got this kind of wonderful pie that are part of uh, what's known as the Far Lights, an ancient order uh, who have protected the arcane, um, the, those are gifted with the arcane since the fall of Dani the Mage uh, over 200, 300 years ago. We'll go 300 years ago. That sounds good. Over 300 years ago. Um, so this is kind of the, the group of heroes that we have. But what of the world, you say? Well, um, what we found ourselves is in, in is inside the Empire of Mandanith, um, just outside the city of Danith itself. This city or this empire is fiercely anti-arcane. Uh, they have hunted down and disappeared anyone who has been born or has learnt or has used arcane magic uh, for the last 300 years. Ever since the, the rise of Dani and Tulak, uh, the, the general Tulak and the mage Dani to take over from the last king, uh, Tulak then turned on Dani and, of course, began the reign of terror against the arcane. Uh, during this time and period, thousands, if not millions, have disappeared. And the Far Lights have continued their job of trying to hide or protect those that have that particular um, gift. But there is a group who see it as a curse. Uh, they are known as the Black Bottle, the secret police of this world, who are currently chasing and are uh, chasing after this, the, after this group of firelights because of a child, a small child called Chunna, who in a fit of rage um, has exploded a block of houses through arcane, um, through arcane power. A child was then taken in by some of the speakers for the um, Temple of Light and handed over to this group of Far Lights to help smuggle them, not just out of the city, not just out of the district, but actually try and get them out of the Empire uh, completely. And of course, being Far Lights, they took this on and have managed to escape the city itself. Unfortunately, not without loss. A speaker, Haru, uh, the one of their original friends, and also one of Ch uh, Chunna's kind of original, not the person who found Chunna after the wreckage, was slain by the Black Bottle at the gate as they were trying to protect the gate from staying or being able to be opened again. Sacrifices themselves in that last moment of whispering a small thing to Clove and saying to the party, run. So... This is kind of where we are in the story <laughs> at the moment. You have, um, just for the last night, you've been sprinting, running along the road northwards. Unfortunately, the music has stopped. That's, that's not good. We can't have that. There we go. Um, you have been running on the road north. Let's just pop over. Uh, running north from the city of Danis. 
towards just past the the town of Hazelfield, between uh, the marsh groves and the broken wilds, on a road that is known as False Pond Road. You yourself know that this road is going to become increasingly more dangerous, especially as it comes through to the daytime. And the image we see is of a small hand. So it's bouncing up and down. As we zoom out and we see the arm is in just resting on a large gold or brass um, armour. And we see that the, as the camera sweeps round, the sleeping child of Chunna uh, slapped over the shoulder of the seven foot illustrious uh, as they are running. The moon is crescent in the sky as we see the constellation, uh, we see the constellation of Timer in the sky. The clock that looks down and reminds us all of our time and place in the present, but also the possibilities of the future. The wind is brushing against your face. The that feeling of the kind of cool autumn, the dewness is beginning to kind of freeze your eyebrows slightly as the air breathes out as the smoke as you visual for yourself. Up ahead, who's leading this this run? It's, it's not going to be Nora. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine Nora to probably is kind of like encouraging everyone to kind of get a move on. Right. Cool. So I think Loretta, you actually end up, you kind of go like 50 feet ahead of everybody. Because you're the one that kind of comes to the next crest of the hill to look out um, before the rest kind of catch up and then you run again and continue your run. Um, it's been a long night, especially as none of you have been able to hold any rations with you. Except, of course, for a couple of balls of bread. <laughs> <laughs> Fish jerky. <laughs> Nora has got oh, and some fish jerky. Yes, we do have some fish yeah. jerky. I forgot about that. There's always <laughs> lots of fish jerky going. <laughs> but other than that, you haven't got any other like um, traveling traveling equipment with you. Um, but the night doesn't seem to be that matter because you're running on pure adrenaline. The knowledge that the black but the black bottle is less than half a day behind you at least. Um, begins to terrify you and it keeps you pushing forward as you go past the sign for Hazelfield you know that just up ahead there will be some choices to continue on to False Pond or to cut west through the broken wilds there's a trumpet there's a feeling in the ground a sound on the air as Libretta gets to the top of the crest of a hill she looks forward and sees those two great forests in head as she turns around she sees a very small cloud of dust on the road far back you could have looked a bit closer yeah does it look as if we are like sort of can we make anything out from that dust or is it just the kind of movement from far off into the distance yeah i think you can see that kind of like spewing cloud um from horses um we're still we're still being followed everyone we're gonna keep going <laughs> we're gonna dig, dig deep or we gotta get off the road either way they're gonna catch mm -hmm. up with us eventually You hear the chong chong chong. Sorry, yeah, you hear the chong 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 of illustrious as he comes to a stop. Um, illustrious looks out and um, uh, with their eyes of night. Um, can I see any? I could, I've got three hundred foot dark vision. Can I? Do I see anything more? Uh, yeah. Let's do a perception check with advantage then. With that. Okay. 22. Two horses. Beelining for us? Yeah, they're going down the road like like the clappers, literally. Um, <laughs> um, you just see that there's two horses. Other than that, I don't think you see any other markings or anything like that. Not from that distance. They are at least like a good mile away. Two horses coming up fast. What are we going to do? 
no idea. We can we can get off the road. Um, if they're on horses, they're going to catch us eventually, aren't they? Yeah, only if we're on a straight path, we get into the forest, and maybe we've got an uneven path. Do better on foot. That'd be dangerous. More dangerous than that. You saw what they got. Uh, true. I think Clove, as a land druid, even you don't go into forests. I like to stick to the water. You know, you can see everything coming, and but I still think it's our best bet. That oh, was really scary back there. <laughs> Try and just hide in the tree line, maybe wait for them to pass and then get back on the road. That would lead them into a trap, take them out. It's the end of their scouts. I think, Loretta, you are concerned that there's only two of them. You know, two that means they're probably splitting up, they're probably looking at all over the place. And they're probably confident in their abilities to oh, they're probably spellcasters. Probably powerful. Three quarters uh, three quarters of a mile away. Right, okay, guys. Now. Yeah, I think we just gotta go somewhere. Um what happens in does anyone know anything about Hazelfield? I'm not going to be very. I'm not. Gonna, I don't know anything, guys. I don't know. Small settlement. My father lives there. Oh. It's, a, it's a bit of a trek. Well, that's a good start. Right? Yeah. Are we able to get there before they catch us, Joe? No, you're looking. Hazelfield is, I think, a good. Yeah, 12 miles away from where you are. Oh, geez. So you're looking for probably right. you could probably walk it through the night and get there through by morning. Mm -hmm. I just gotta hope that no one's named me at any point of this and they know not to look for me there. Half oh mile. yeah, that might be a point. Okay, right. So um, whatever's nearest then. Well, where are we? Just a forest? forest? Is it I think we just got to duck into the forest. Yeah, yeah let's, let's go. Let's go. I just, I just need to stop running a minute. Okay, so you... Do you all start going towards the forest? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think on hearing that, the last just, just turns and beelines in the direction of the forest. As you kind of run across this kind of open field of poppies and bluebells, um sort of waist height in sort of grasses as you start running conscious of being followed are we leaving a particular like trail through this kind of um, wilderness as we go that's completely up to you here is there any way that any way that you can do it? you can go a little slower it might get a little bit more risky if you try and go slower or if you've got any other spells or anything else that you could use to try to help you out here Certainly don't. I think we just yeah. got to get in there and hope we lose them in the woods. Okay, yeah. Quarter of a mile. Yeah, so, it's getting, it's getting. <laughs> so you run, you just literally run through the fields, uh, raptor style. Um, <laughs> sort of like you can see those lines of you as you run through. Um, and you get to the tree line itself. Um, as you kind of get to begin to get closer and closer, Clove, you start um, to feel slightly colder. You notice it because you're used to kind of making, being aware of your temperature on the seas uh, and the rivers and things like this. Uh, but you, you feel it noticeably cooler for you. Um, nobody else feels that. Everyone else feels that kind of the normal normalities you get over to the forest front um all right so let's let's do some stealthing then and see if we can hide in these trees mm. any viewers want to give us some advantages that would be really useful right now yeah well it's gonna <laughs> cast guidance on illustrious again <laughs> okay cool so that's just got guidance yeah 
15. Mm. 18. Mm. You're okay. fine. Plus four. 22. <laughs> Which is Ooh. good, being the one with the child. That's a kind of uh, a good thing now. Um, oh, hang on. No, 15, 19, because I'm in full plate, so I'm rolling with disadvantage. Yeah, yeah thank you very much. Uh, oh, bless. Uh, the 12. Okay, right. Yeah. So you kind of bring yourselves into to the woods and you sort of hold. Your breath is sort of like heaving now as you try to like list it out and you hear that. As a sort of like a chunking of these large, heavy horses begin to kind of become closer and closer. And just as they start coming towards the ridge, you all hold your breath. As the horses come, they seem to stop exactly where you stopped. Um, as they begin to sort of, they see the horses are turning and clopping through. On the horses themselves, you see two people. Uh, Clove, you recognize one as Grim, the old, the way of the old one, um, Druid. And Illustrious, you see Speaker Cain, the war priest fanatic on their horses as they look up towards look around themselves to see if they can find a way of seeing you so i am going to use my advantage here no no okay so speaker kane yeah let's try this then let's go my with dog <laughs> mm. gonna wisdom i'll go with advantage on this one so Ooh, okay. Ooh. What he see, he suddenly he sees the he sees the lines inside of the of mm. the of the, for, of the field. And his horse sort of begins to turn as he looks out directly towards the forest. His horse begins to kind of move, or he starts trying to gear his horse forward as the horse kind of starts going through the field itself. Grim sort of comes up behind as he begins slowly walking towards you on their horses. They begin to get about 50 feet away from you. 30 feet. I'm going to hold a guiding bolt. 25 feet and suddenly the horses rear up in anger. As he's unable to kind of keep control of of the horse as the horse doesn't seem to want to go any closer whatsoever as uh grim's horse begins to kind of move he places a hand onto its neck uh as you start to see him cast something his lips begin to move and you hear him turn to cain and just says uh they won't go into the forest Speaker Kane replies, but why? They're just these simple horses who do whatever we want them to do. <laughs> it's dark in there. Corrupted. So he looks across and Kane begins to, uh, Grim begins to sweep across the, uh, the vista of the woods itself to see if he sees you. Okay, so I've lost all of my character sheets. I don't know why I called them stupid names that I can never remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a high. We all know time. people with stupid names can't see very well. Oh, <laughs> that was lucky I didn't use the inspiration on that one. Okay, <laughs> see Grim look, looking across. <laughs> Thinks he sees someone. You there. Come out. I can see you. I know my own kind when I smell it. Druid. He gets off his horse. Mm. Oh, shit. Uh, 
Simply come out and talk to us. You can go about your rest of your days. Or we'll just burn the forest. It's up to you. Plot was like desperately looking around, like not saying anything. Like, <laughs> you see Nora, like just a pair of eyes peek out from the hole in a tree. Like, <laughs> you know, Lustrous is just cold staring back, just a stern stare of no. There's an orange glow. Kicks across as you see those shadows of the trees goes long. As you see Grim just touch, begin to touch the meadow. As the flames mm. begin to catch around them. You come out here. Or that forest will kill you. Or our flames will. You must already starting to feel unwell through it. <laughs> speak again, turns to him and goes, I don't really know what gods it is that you speak to, but uh, usually that's when I speak to the thin air, I'm speaking to a particular deity. <laughs> Shut up, speaker. You wouldn't know worship if it slapped you in the face. You worship alcohol and corruption yourself. She gets up and starts to move back. Fine. We shall see you on the other side, druid. As he lets that fire begin to kind of move across, as you both all start seeing them walk backwards towards their horses and place on onto the horses and go off to the north. The smoke starts to kind of billow through into your faces. Can I get a constitution saving throw from everyone, please? Ooh. Dan, you have been given inspiration from Daz, by the way. So thank you very much for that. Uh Thanks, Daz. 16. Uh, yeah. Oh, 11. Probably should have used it. Yeah, I'll 7 for me. Okay. Um, the smoke goes straight into your lungs, um, Loretta. And I'm going to give you a level of exhaustion. Oh, as you no. struggle, struggle to breathe. Um, as, the, as it almost kind of starts to burn, burn your, your lungs slightly. Um, illustrious, you're there with a kind of a managed to kind of cover the face of Chuna mm -hmm. from the smoke itself. But the heat begins to kind of become uh, almost uh, unfathomable on your skin as these beautiful poppies and bluebells and night tulips and uh, star daisies all start to burn in front of you. Mm. They basically just created a, a wall of fire that's now forcing us into the woods. Yeah, exactly it. As you turn to go through to the woods, you place your hand, Loretta, as you're coughing onto a tree and it feels like sticky. Uh, as you lift your hand away, you have this kind of black mark on your hands. I can look towards uh, Clove. Almost looking for guidance, and because I don't really understand, I'm not really a forest dweller myself. <laughs> and, oh, we gotta get out of here. We gotta go. Yeah, but I think we gotta go in. We can't go out. I and and Plo's like panicking, like she's seeing this fire, and she's like desperately like trying to think of all the things that she could do to like stop it. And she's got she's coming up short, and she's like just. She's like, we we gotta go. I don't I don't know what to do, and she's feeling really helpless. And 
We've got nowhere else to go. We let's go in. Let's... Okay. So All right. Open. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Let's move. Um. Great. Yeah. We'll go further in. She's Can I see Joe if there's any like little animals or anything nearby? Yeah. Sure. Do perception check. Thank you. It's a nine, so... Uh... Nope. Um, you are... <laughs> in fact, what actually freaks you out more is you can't even hear birdsong. Okay. Like, there's just nothing. And that's Great. with you looking, and you, you don't even hear the birds. Great. Well, it looks bad in here. Let's um, <laughs> get going. <laughs> as you begin to kind of march your way through. Okay, so who is, again, is it still, is Clove going to start leading through the forest or is it going to be Loretta still or uh, Nora taking over? Who's going to kind of lead the party from now on? I certainly think Loretta's going to hold back a bit more with the coughing and kind of like pulling mm-hmm. everything up to try and cover her mouth. She's not feeling too great at the moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, Nora can go, go ahead. Uh, I think she's she's kind of brazening this out. I think she's absolutely <laughs> bricking it and is doing that like, it's fine, it's fine, come on, it's fine. Uh, it as uh, as um, uh, Nora comes past, uh, comes past Illustrious, he holds his hand out again. She says, "May I?" She just nods. She's not looking at you. Hands on the shoulder, eyes of night. Wait. So you've got uh, yeah, cheers. You've got like two hours, I'd say, of night beforehand. But I'm going to ask you to do a survival check for me, please. <laughs> We're in for the good rolls today, baby. <laughs> um, before uh, Loretta goes, just more guidance. <laughs> Okay, so just put an extra four on that. That that could change the thing. That could change a lot. Okay, got D4. Who needs to roll a D4? Uh, Stuart. Oh. It's when I do a uh, skill check, though, right? Yeah. Yes. So for the, okay. are we all doing the survival check? Oh no, no. It was just for oh. just for oh. um, Nora. Oh, oh sorry. Okay. <laughs> good roll. This is a really, really good roll. All right. So you <laughs> believe yourself to be going this direction. Oh great. Um, you start to kind of the march through for the next two hours. It's extremely great. difficult to know where it is you're going. Um, in this place okay the the trees seem to be blackened and stilled the ground itself seems to be in a constant state of decay uh, as the leaves seem to be squelchy underfoot the removal of the sound of birds sort of the silence is terrifying to kind of i think to you and nora in particular uh, to mm. Loretta, kind of used to sort of hearing the sounds of the city around you. Um, I think illustrious from behind, with Chuna, you can see that Clove. Clove looks slightly different to everybody else. Clove, could you do a Constitution saving throw for me, please? Great, great. You and you suddenly see her sort of like sort of stand up straight and push through. This feeling, you look down at your fingers, Clove, and you can see these like darkened spots on the ends of your tips of your fingers. Um, and you kind of like see them and you try to take control of what's happening move your fingers and try to kind of get the circulation going and those black dots begin to kind of move away but this place is definitely affecting you uh more than the others do i do i see any of that or do i just see a sort of like drop on and stand back up 
Um, I think I think you could see it. I mean, you're the behind, and of course you can see over everybody. So I think <laughs> that, and I think as a cleric, you would be looking out for anyone who looks unwell or may need help. I think that's a little bit of your MO, I think. So I think you see it. Some wrong. Just keep reaching out and, you know, normally I can feel the, you know, the there's so much life in the forest usually. You know, I don't I haven't spent a lot of time in the forest, but you know, normally you can there's there's so much of the old magic running through and, and I can't feel any of it. It's it's unsettling. Creature of nature, right? Sure. So were those horses. They didn't want to come in here neither. Yeah, it's... maybe they knew what they were doing. Yeah, we didn't have a choice. But you did the right thing. You go out there, you get us all killed. You got to push on. Find a way. I don't know if that's true, but it's what, what, what I did anyway. I would have done the same thing. This one, he sort of like gestures to Chinnam. He's more important. More important than Yeah, all. I think so. Do you see that kind of big spittle patch where he's like snoring <laughs> into the into the cloth and his face looks he he looks absolutely angelic inside and comfortable inside the arms of Illustrious. I think Illustrious, you kind of look up and again you can't see the stars either here. It's just to get out of this place as soon as we can. Get some sleep. But we need to push on for now. I think as this uh, conversation's been going on behind her, Nora, has her shoulders have just been like rising up and up and up, and she's literally just like head down, focused, walking and she knows that she doesn't know where she's going or what she's doing, but she's uh, she's kind of committed to it now. And uh, you just see her hand slip inside her um, her waistcoat, and she's uh, stroking a little a little mouse there. That's that's her pet, the she... one living thing that she's seen so far. <laughs> I think you're the, when you put your hand in, the mice bites you. It's never Great. it's never bitten you before. She, um, she does what you should do when an animal's panicking and just sort of like claps it until it, it stills a little bit. And then she'll take her hand away and go, fucking hell. <laughs> As you kind of continue walking, um, Loretta, you, you're really struggling. Um, I think... As like sort of she's there like coughing uh, quite profusely and stuff, but she's just doing the best that she can to continue on and not draw attention to it, and just be like it's just to make her walk off, just gonna walk it off, <laughs> and like doubling over and coughing, but she's just trying. Um, and I think could you do another Constitution saving throw for me with disadvantage? Oh. Uh, guidance, guidance. <laughs> oh, so you, know. <laughs> you literally, you cough up and you just turn and you just gob out this black sort of Ooh. like lung butter is the only way to describe <laughs> oh, it. Oh, that's so <laughs> Lung butter. Because it looks that's like slaps foul. onto the ground. But that like clears your chest. Uh, you are still like n like not heavily knackered, but like it clears your chest. Um, I think I inhaled too much of that smoke. Oh lord! Mm -hmm. How far away f are we from the fire? Is the fire like catching up to us at all, or are we making distance? I think you're making distance, um, and then you see see the fire in front of you. After, after walking for about an hour and a half. 
Have we gone in circles? Well, all we did is fire on both sides, didn't it? <laughs> I'm so lost. We're so lost. As you believed yourself to be kind of moving, moving around, moving forward or moving to the west, um, you actually find yourself back where you started. Oh, <laughs> I think Plove is going to go up to Nora very tentatively because, you know, Nora's intimidating and be like, can, or, do you need help? I, I, I don't know if I can help, but I, I'm, I might. I can, I can at least tell the trees apart. Uh, you just like see in Nora, the flames are like catching Nora's <laughs> eyes, which have just like welled <laughs> to, uh, to brimming. And she just takes a deep breath and goes, yeah, whatever, do it. And she just like turns around and she's like picking at her nails, waiting for someone to tell her what to do. Um, I think, Joe, that picking Nora, you're also just sort of, you feel your stomach just crying out for food. Okay. So, Clove, you're taking over. Yeah. Okay. She's going to try. She's felt pretty useless up until this point, so she's kind of... Okay, I can, I can do this thing. Okay, so let's do the uh, nature check, please. Survival. Guys. Survival, check. survival check. Survival check. Okay. Guidance. Those are very right. different. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, plus the guidance. Plus a D4. Eleven. Eleven. <laughs> oh, I, have, I have plus six on survival. I just rolled a two. <laughs> okay. Fine. All right. So you guys are going to continue. You go off. The sun. The sun begins to rise <laughs> through the trees, but it gives little warmth in this place. Does um, it give a direction? Yeah. Mm. Like I was going to say, do we see it from a particular compass point? Yeah. It's just all that you can see is what comes through the canopy. Mm. Um, and oftentimes you can't see more than five feet in front of you, if not ten feet in front of you, uh, through this very dense, uh, dark forest. As you begin the kind of walking through. Um, you do come to a clearing, however. Um which gives you some time to sit. Um, you've not seen this clearing before, uh, so you're definitely going in a different direction. <laughs> okay. Which is Yay. useful. Promising. <laughs> but uh, it seems as if you guys are going into the kind of resting by day, traveling by night. So uh -huh. you kind of like sit in this kind of open clearing to rest. Great. Okay. Everybody all right? Pearl just falls to her knees and then just <laughs> the arms out on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, but yeah. How is everyone? How's the kid? Kid ain't moved all night. Literally just like, it's now sort of like starting to come down the, the, the uh, braces. <laughs> And like dripping down his, this little uh, illustrious <laughs> little finger. Never seen a child sleep so soundly before. How can that kid sleep through all of that? He's had quite the day. It must have been through quite a bit. Mm. Ate a lot of sugar too. <laughs> As you kind of like all look around you, it's this tiny clearing in the middle of the forest. Uh, and it feels like some sort of um, oasis where there is some light and some warmth. Um, you almost feel as if you haven't seen the sun for days, if not weeks. 
from that short four hour or four and a half hour walk through a forest. Maybe we should get some rest. It's almost like the feeling of like a thousand wolves being around you as well, mm. sort of staring at you. Can we see anything? Or can I see anything that, like in, within the clearing or anything that sort of looks no, untoward? No, I think... Stiffer. I think you start to feel something. Let's do a wisdom saving throw, actually. Oh, good. 26. Yeah. Ooh! Um, oh, you baby. feel the pull of darkness upon you. Um, you recognize it, and you push it away. But you know it's there. And you start to kind of fathom what Clove might be going through. Seems like we got a choice. We either push on through out of this hellscape or we uh, we take a rest now. Move on again at night. Uh, Nora has been kind of just staring sullenly ahead and uh, with that she'll go like yeah rest is is probably a good idea I'm, I'm I can watch stuff I'm all right yeah I think Clove will look at Loretta and be like I I think we have to all right then uh that's not just rest because of me I mean uh, if we need to press on we need to press on I think we could do with a breather. But if I'm honest, I don't think we are. I don't think we're prepped for camping out and at night, at least. Mm. Probably better for us well, to. Well, and also, if they're not coming in here, maybe we'll just stay in here for like a really long time until they've stopped looking. Hey, let's live in the forest. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be fine. Yeah, that'll it seems be fine. really, it so... seems really friendly. Yeah. Mhm. Mhm. So yeah, think, maybe a little rest now and uh hmm? You think we're alone in this place? You not feel those eyes on you. She like lifts her chin to you, <laughs> draws herself up to put a full height and goes, No, I don't, because we haven't seen anything. <laughs> she turns around and sits down. And uh, illustrious turns Rest invisible. in a restful position. <laughs> <laughs> illustrious turns invisible and says, "Sometimes it's not the things that you can see." Just literally Watch staring you. straight ahead. <laughs> 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 um, and it literally only lasts a round, so within six seconds he's back. <laughs> um, <laughs> she missed it. She, yeah, she, she missed it. She he saw what? And it goes, what? She was just standing there. <laughs> the whole point. Just... Throw down some fucking knowledge. What about? <laughs> All right, can someone find me? Help me find me a clearing. <laughs> um, is it like in terms of like around here, Joe? Are there any places that are like like that's got brush or got bush or anywhere that would provide a bit of cover? Uh, yeah, that that is all going back towards the darkness of the forest again. So it's you've almost imagined this like um like this is say like an oasis. It's like this small piece of green grass mm. and surrounding it is these dark forests. So the only cover you've got is kind of like from the leaves of the trees going back into the forest itself. Okay, there's no like loose branches or anything like that. Um Or you could do a survival check if you want. Yeah. Twenty two. Yeah, you find some you find Ooh. some bits and pieces. Um, I think what you, you you find is when you pick them up, they already feel rotten, like they just snap. Yeah. Um, even though they have leaves on them, maybe black leaves, but the you can feel the they just the, the branches just snap. Mm. So they, I think Illustrious is going to head um, in the direction of the uh, um, the water, um, pull out just a a tiny little crystal bead and drop to his knees and start uh, casting uh, Liaman's tiny hut, um, which is the thing that I got a level five. Yeah, <laughs> we love a tiny Legend. hut. 
Um, and and as it, as it starts to sort of slowly swell, it tries it makes the out outside of it look the same sort of black mulchy color as uh, as the outside, and then slowly starts to adorn them a bit with leaves and tries to make it seem as much like a a bit of fallen foliage as possible. Yeah, really nice. As you kind of all kind of help to kind of put this together um, and then get inside the tiny hut. I never understand how you get into the tiny hut, but I always imagine there's a little door, like a little hobbit door that you can kind of climb in through. Um, as you all kind of lie down inside that shade um, and begin to kind of drift off. Uh, as you sort of see all of you lying down on the surface, uh, on the ground itself, uh, we just see these two beady eyes like spring open. And his chart, the eyes of Chunna sort of looks around. He springs up and sits up and looks around you and sees you all lying there. As he kind of wanders over, he sees his little feet kind of wandering over to Loretta. Kind of looks down at them and sort of. Hey, gig- kid. And, it's, and he kind of walks over and sort of takes your hand and tries to kind of get you up to play. Uh, maybe in a bit. And so let go Someone else want to take the reins? Or... And he looks around and sees Nora and runs over to Nora. And as he gets there, you can just hear the snoring kind of kicking up from Nora. <laughs> it's, his shoulders slightly drop. As he turns and looks over at Clove, and he sort of tottles over slowly, and sort of sits what? down cross-legged near, near her head. Uh, I was gonna say before they fell asleep, uh, Clove would take the hour to cast Find Familiar with one of her wild shape slots, and so uh, a river otter like appears kind of out of her like, out of her jacket and then up on her shoulder. And so that's Terry, and he's her familiar. Mm-hmm. Who's like a weasel for mechanical purposes, but he's a, he's a river otter. <laughs> <laughs> and he becomes really taken back by the otter, and he sort of begins to play. Uh, and you hear a giggle, which is a sound that you haven't heard from Jenna at all. And he sort of looks over at you, and he goes, brings his hands together. And there's sort of like blue and like red wisps of color and smoke become to kind of start coming together. And he just produces a perfect apple and kind of offers it to you. Okay, I'll take it. Thank you. He just sort of stares at you, his big brown eyes. So I'm looking at you. And he sits down and as you lie down he kind of like rolls in and lies next to you as you kind of your eyes begin to kind of slightly begin to close out of tiredness you can see him just sort of putting his finger and like an apple turns up next to illustrious and then a pear next to loretta and then he kind of like two fingers and shoots a loaf of bread over to Nora sort of like as you kind of drop her you could just sort of see his magic kind of flow across this camp um, you all kind of sleep incredibly soundly probably more exhaustion than anything else none of you stay up to watch I don't think <laughs> I think it was all intentions to watch, but I think you're all just too exhausted to do so. Mm-hmm. Um, Terry's keeping watch. <laughs> I think, yeah, Terry's keeping watch. Perfect. Um, I think that. Oh, there we go. Not this. I think um, the sound of silence kind of like slightly begins to haunt your dreams, however. As each of you begin to have thoughts in your sleep. I'm just getting that light on. Um, Loretta, you, you see a dog. 
it runs through a crowded street. Um, you can feel yourself running after it. The cobbled streets, you can feel that like on the callus of your foot of your on the pad of your foot. As you start running through it and you realize that your legs are smaller than they ever were. Probably more like a child. Do you see this scruffy dog? Um, what's the name of the dog? Um didn't actually think of that. It's gonna be Rom Rom. Thanks, mate. Rom Rom. <laughs> Do you see Rom Rom? He's a red setter. Um, yes. So and he's sort of running through this place, and you're sort of chasing after it. Uh, as you notice, it starts running towards Main Street. Just, just no, 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 no. As you've seen this before in your past, as a cart comes screaming round the corner. Get to him, get to him, get to him. As you see the dog get hit by the horse underneath and get trampled or fly into the air and land on the road. And again, and again. And then right, you hear the kind of the yelping as you run across. And it's almost as if it feels as if it's all in slow motion. As you see this person sort of run towards the dog, the hand goes out, it's bright, brilliant, like white light kicked and shoes from their hand and touches the dog as you see the shock on everyone's faces and the disgust that it begins to turn to as you see this person heal your dog the dog turns and after you're blinded by the light the dog begins to run towards you and as the dog light leaps into your arms, you can just see behind them, through the eyes and through the tears, these guards come and take that person and drag them away through the crowd. Just like before, I turn to an adult in this scenario. It's like, where are they taking him? He helped. It's like, helped? That there is a devil. That dog's probably cursed. He's not cursed, he's fine. Leave him alone. If I were you, I'd put that dog down. Touched. Mm -hmm. your... Look nervously around and just back away. You start backing away as you feel that darkness sort of kick through to you as it starts to come closer and closer to you until you hold, find yourself holding a candle. And the light begins to push it back slightly. You kind of merge through as we see the heat and the smoke of the candle go up into the air. As it begins to form clouds on a still sea. As we go down to a small fisher boat, we see a young clove. Um, sat in a boat with two other halflings. They seem to be much older. Um, as you see, you see what seems to be a your maybe your father, maybe an uncle, cast out. Uh, and they suddenly they get a bite. This huge excitement of the bite as they all run, including yourself, go to grab onto the waist of the halfling and pull back to try and catch this fish. As the fish kind of reels in, you see this kind of hooked trout. Uh, as you unpick the, as you'll see your, your father or uncle, unpick the top. Then this is one moment. As you see the fish fly through the air and slam its head onto the deck. But in that exact moment, you feel a moment of absolute everything and then nothing. With that waking of your connection towards the animal. As this elder halfling turns its face to you and says, What's up, Clave? What's wrong? <laughs> It was, it, it, it was there, and, and now it's not. 
I don't I don't know. I just feel different. <laughs> You're such a sensitive soul. It's just a fish. But it it was swimming the but it, why why is it not why why isn't it moving? Because and then this younger sort of small sort of teenage looking half it's like because we killed it. Now now calm down, now calm down. Because we had to it's... eat it. We only take okay. what we need, not more than what we require. Okay. And I think she'll like just go really quiet and she's thinking about <laughs> like <laughs> dinner from the night before and she's connecting all these dots for the first time. <laughs> See that and he kind of picks it up and puts it in your hands. Just hold it for a little bit. It's yourself holding this fish. As you kind of look down at the fish, you can see through its scales the kind of these reflections of the sunlight. It begins to kind of dance upon your face. You can't start to see kind of like all of these hundreds and thousands and millions of shoals of fish swimming through. Uh, as they kind of begin to turn and shift into thousands of people in a city and all these tiny windows that are lit by candlelight you find yourself sort of holding on to a town in your hands as you kind of look down upon the fish you kind of place it down once more and quietly you rest your hands upon it its tail flicks. You see one of the scales kind of flip off and move into the air. It flies through the wind, swings through, and it's like it turns into a petal that falls into an observatory and lands in the lap of a furball. He pushes it aside from their notes and looks upon the stars. So he looks kind of up, but you see that his kind of whiskers have not quite formed yet. A mere six foot three. But looking up at the stars, as we see down their body, you see they're wearing very simple robes. The robes themselves are covered in small uh, silver uh, jewels. As he kneels to the ground on the hard stone, looking upwards. As we see illustrious ask a single question how can I forgive myself you look up at the constellation uh, which is known as yeah as the nurse um, it has essentially, I think, about four visible big stars in the center, and then these kind of fewer stars that are to the edge. You remember this particular constellation because a star had disappeared and reappeared, um, almost as if it had been healed or turned or forgiven by the constellation. As you begin to try and contemplate that question, and you just hear from behind you, why? What do you need to forgive yourself of? And without turning, <laughs> mistakes in my past, the life of vice I lived, That is why you've come here, Speak of Montgomery. To move past such things. You know, I used to like the ponies myself. Every day at the track, or the Coliseum. 
but I found my way here. With like-minded people. <laughs> we try to help here. Your candle has gone out. Guess we're just gonna have to share the warmth then. Ooh. So we see you kind of move over and light as he comes over himself and strikes the match and lights and pulls out the paper, this paper of constellations as the ink kind of like runs across. We see the letters flow and roll through until we see a bowl of, a ball of yarn when it folded up together being kind of pulled together by these small hands these little gnomish hands kind of bringing all the wool together uh as she's picking them off of a of a large kind of uh, board on the wall which is a map of uh Danith. um and all the pins are there with all these little shops that she's marked out and got the route to each one kind of marked through in what's known as the gen uh just uh, <laughs> uh just off west street or west road uh, which is a small abandoned uh green grocer green grocer that has been kind of commandeered by the kids of the street um as we see this kind of moment if you look up at all of these different um shops that you're about to kind of raid as a child as you kind of step out into the sun the sun blinds through to the face as we see all of these kind of people passing you can see um you see that there's like seems to be some sort of commotion or or interest in something as you kind of run along with the crowd you push through their legs as you get through into the center square where you see uh, four people being pulled out into the street itself uh you hear the jeers around and the shouts from the people around you mainly you hear um jeers like um uh, things like go on make yourself disappear now or um or, your demons can't help you now as you see a fire as all of these books are being burnt on the fire and these two, these four people are sort of sat there. The stones are coming in from the different population as they're being dragged up to a pair of stocks. Um, you see them sort of staying there as they're being held there, almost as if you see them for days. As you see them stand there, you almost go there every day to look but not to kind of jeer, but to figure out if you can unlock the lock that's on that padlock. As the sun goes down, as the guards are sort of having their cigarettes and eating their cheese sandwiches, we see a shadow move in the darkness. There's a small eight-year-old climbs up towards one of the gallows uh, and with a hairpin pops the lock as we see the, the different teeth inside the lock click 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 change as the top kind of pops open this blinding light clicks through as you kind of open your eyes and there's this like small moment small brush there's over the top of the tiny hut that was missed as this burning sunlight is like hitting your eyeball <laughs> you kind of look down and you can see there's a loaf of bread in front of you cheese and like ham bowls of water as you look over everybody else and they seem to all be asleep but surrounded in front of them is this bountiful food and sitting in the min middle is Chuna stroking a, an, an otter <laughs> and giggling as you all begin to kind of open your eyes and look down at the feast around you. And so we're going to take a small little break at that point now.
Joseph. I know, right? <laughs> Pretty. <laughs> Story time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um we're gonna go for a small little break, you know. Uh, but we shall be back very, very shortly. So do go and get yourself a beer, get yourself a cup of tea, get yourself a coffee, get yourself a Kit Kat, because you know it's break time. Um, mm. But before we do, I'm just going to quickly drop in. Um, we have a new TPK starting next week, um, which I think I'm allowed to say this. Dan, am I allowed to say this now? Well, you've done it now. Yeah, I've already done <laughs> it now. Uh, what I mean is is who will be running said session. Um, yeah, go on uh, then. Okay, so our wonderful <laughs> Dan, Mr. Dan Berman is going to be running the next session of TPK next week. So we thought we'd quickly drop this video in have a look and then we'll go to break and we'll see you in about five ten minutes time all right so enjoy yourself and we'll see you guys in a little bit okay. Bye. Bye. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed that little TPK. So, of course, we've got TPK next week on the... Oh, my God, the date's just gone from my head. I just looked at it. 24. <laughs> Thank you very much. 24. Um, come and join us uh, for some TPK, a TPK action. I'm guessing you can guess what the creature is that we're, what we're fighting with. And, of course, being controlled by our wonderful Mr. Dan Berman over in the corner here. Are you looking forward to it, mate? I'm going to kill them all, and I'm going to have no remorse. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so do come and uh, come and join us as we are in, inside our um, custom-built arena from the bon wonderful Benj Randy. If you're here, uh, usually Benj Randy is around. But if you don't make sure you don't want to miss that, so do give us a quick follow. Uh, if you're there in the background and want to give us a quick follow, we're moving further and further on on our uh, on our follower goal we're now looking for 550 we're currently on 505 yeah, uh, i've got 508 on here but it's probably wrong um <laughs> but do come and give us a quick follow and um, we would really really appreciate that uh, and hope if you are lurking in the background i really hope that you're enjoying yourself but you could always say hello because our, our community is really wonderful and strong here um so yeah exactly hi <laughs> <laughs> Um, but of course, we are in the middle of this particular adventure. Now, I am going to give a little warning on this next part. Uh, this is not a nice world at all, uh, and we're going to see some, possibly see some references to things like um, mass graves and genocide and things like this. So, I just wanted to kind of give a warning there. Um, so, if you don't like that type of content. I will give a warning before we actually start that, and then we'll give you a little hand signal so you can come back and join us. Okay, good. So, you guys have been sleeping. Sleeping like little babies. Uh, during the daytime inside your tiny hut, which I imagine to be like the heat of a tent uh, in the middle of July. Uh, that kind of <laughs> sweltering heat of a tent. Um, but you will wake up to see that there is food around you. 
um, as you see Chuna in the middle sort of playing with uh, the, is it, a, do you say sea otter or is it a... It's a, it's a river otter, river yeah. River otter, playing with a river otter yeah. in the centre as you look around at this group, um, these complete strangers that you have kind of happened to kind of be, be with. Um, I think, Illustrious, you put your hand into your bag and you pull out a candle. Looks like it went out. He just puts it in the middle. You know you can't light that in here, right? <laughs> Looks around at all the wood. She gives you a little wink. Fortunately, we've got that little light over there. And she points to Chinna. Yeah. And Chinna's almost can't hear you. He's kind of going... <laughs> and the otter's going... Yeah, then. <laughs> you kind of pulls out this little rock from its armpit and sort of just to play with it. And Chinna sort of like takes a rock from the ground and starts playing with his own rock. It's kind of like this kind of moment of just watching this this innocence. Um, Illustrious leans over to the biggest hunk of bread and just rips it off and just starts handing it out to people. And as that happens, um, just like, just from the center, just really gently, the tiny heart starts to fade. And as it gets to the bottom, he strikes some tinder and lights the candle. You see that the candle sort of like flips like this quite a lot. Uh, and then kind of dies and snuffs out. Vegas. I try and catch um, the breeze and like sort of maybe see if there's a smell of burning on it. I'm kind of worried that it's still going. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think you can. I think you all can kind of catch just a, a small whiff of it. Um, but it feels like it's like that kind of damp damp smoke smell mm. like maybe it's been put out it's, it's not so much of a rush anymore but still we gotta keep moving i don't know where we're actually gonna go i think clove you've still got like the sense of yeah it's that way <laughs> and she's maybe putting on a little bit of extra bravado, right? She's trying to seem like she knows what she's doing after being pretty helpless up until this point. It's sort of like that kind of like, yeah, this is my ball game. This is my ball game. This is my part. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah. Uh, this is this is why I'm here, right? Right? <laughs> I, I think uh, as, as they're eating... Um, illustrious sort of earth song style like runs his fingers into uh runs his fingers into the into the ground and just looks down and says um i don't know if this is gonna work with uh this kind of forest but uh if you could give my friend clove here a little help on our way i would be most appreciative because as a fur bog, I can do speech of beast and leaf. So I can talk to plants. I don't know what they say, but apparently, <laughs> according to this, I have advantage on charisma checks against them. <laughs> so maybe I can persuade the forest <laughs> to help. You just hear this Amazing. like... <laughs> That's the first thing you hear. Oh, damn. <laughs> One second. 
bit long that long butter. That's the second bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, and you just hear, hear it, just like, just say, "Get out, Lightbringer." Well, okay then. <laughs> as you kind of look out at that darkened forest, as you begin to sort of try and collect your things. This forest is in a hurry for us to leave, so uh, with any luck, if we are heading towards the outskirts, it will help us. I have faith. Yeah, I think we're all in a hurry to leave, uh, Nora says, and she stands up and rips the remainder of the bread and squishes it into a little ball, puts it in one pocket, uh, and then rips off a little bit and gestures towards Chana because all he's eaten so far is Turkish delight. And you see you're gonna like look at look at you. He looks over at the apple and then in his hand he kind of like is holding something in his hand. He looks over at the apple. She's gonna have a little look in, at the hand. He's like And he opens it up and it's full of Turkish delight. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. Uh, she's going to try and do a quick switch and replace the Turkish delight with the bread. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say that you're faster than this child. So, yes, you could do it. Right. <laughs> Perfect. She's like, oh, I think it's not. It's like, Fireball. <laughs> yeah, fireball. I've <laughs> 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 sort of seen crunch into an apple. Like. <laughs> she she keeps the Turkish delight and like shows him. She'll put it in a pocket, so it's still it's still around. <laughs> okay, uh, and so he kind of runs over and sort of looks at you and kind of walks over towards Chloe and sort of like just holds her hand. You can feel like the or that orange light start kicking through, similar to what it was before, but the opposite side. Uh, as you begin, you kind of walk through uh, as the dusk. It's dusk, isn't it? Yeah, dusk begins to kind of fall. It falls like insanely quickly, like minutes from when you walk out from the glade in that kind of open space until you kind of go into the forest itself. Um. You continue walking for about four hours. <laughs> Clove, you begin to realise that you might be taking them deeper into the forest instead of away to the edges. Oopsie. <laughs> I love so much. But then you start to hear... Sorry, I've got some shouting outside my window. Well done, guys. Yeah, yeah, you crack on. Um, so, uh, you, as you're kind of walking along, you kind of, a sound suddenly kicks in that you can hear, which is the sound of birds. Uh, lots of them. Ravens or blackbirds. You're not really sure which kind. As you begin to see that like the forest begins to thin slightly as you kind of start to come out. Okay, this is the warning guys. If you would like to leave now, this is the time to do so and we'll give you a gesture when we're finished. Uh, as you step out, you can the first thing you see is thousands of blackbirds and crows and ravens sort of swarming ahead. As your eyes begin to fall down, you can just see that this part of the forest has sort of been cleared. The ground has been ripped up and churned up. As you see these huge mounds. You, as you begin walking towards out of the clearing, you see that there are ditches. Um, there's these hands and bones Sort of scattered around all of which are humanoid as you see these kind of huge mass graves deep inside this forest 
this feels like a very dark and it feels like the epicenter of this darkness that is befalling this forest. Um, you see these kind of piles of of things and stuff that's sort of like sitting in the dirt. And you see that there's these crows just descending on one of the holes. Um, as you can kind of look around you, the four of you standing, as you feel this, your hands clove get pulled up and a big snot kind of being put across it. As you look down and you see that Chuna's eyes are just pouring, and pouring, and pouring. Uh, as you see a field of of the arcane in front of you. I think Clove kind of reaches out and tries to like turn Shana towards her and um, Terry like travels from her shoulders onto onto theirs and like kind of curls around uh, on his shoulders. He tries to push you away like he wants to turn and look like he wants to stand and look at it and you you have a moment where you look down at him and he seems much older than he is as you let him turn this is as he turns and looks upon the field this churned up arcane and he sort of like doesn't drop to his knees but he sits on the ground in tears flowing from his eyes the rest of you are all stunned silent sort of looking in your own places so i'm going to ask each of you what you're doing here and what you're thinking let's start i think loretta's gonna be doing quite logically just a little bit of mental math and just calculating the sheer organization involved in this and just the more numbers add up it's just gonna become more and more horrified and angry grips the blades which kind of she always carries even when she's traveling just that little bit tighter sons of bitches This isn't right. What the hell are they doing? You're sort of stood off on, on your own. It's almost as if you feel as if each of you are isolated from each other. Even though you're about a few feet away from each other. And Nora. Yes. She sort of enters into this and realizes what they're all seeing and just goes stock still like as stone um, and stares for a really long time and similar to uh, the fire fail of earlier on you just see uh, something in her eyes like passing back and forth and then just as sort of quickly and violently as that came it's gone again and she takes a step forward almost in the direction uh, of one of these sites and stops herself and she'll just she looks around one last time and goes and just sits next to Chana quietly and you sort of hear that kind of flapping as you see kind of like the cloak of illustrious sort of blowing in that wind. Um, Illustrious is is willing himself to stay. Can you hear me? Um, Illustrious is willing himself to stay looking directly at the grave and is scanning for every different person he can make out 
and whilst doing so is just muttering prayers of protection and guidance and safe journey to the other side, praying to Helm, holding on to this owl's eye symbol across his chest and just doing it on repeat in every language that he knows, which is about seven, trying to go through and cover as many people as possible. And that, when that is finished, remove his hand symbol and there are three points in his hand bottom of the eye where he's drawn blood um, he's been gripping it so tightly and you're going to place you kind of see it and place your hand down on the, on the mud sort of connecting yourself to this side and as you kind of draw your hands back you like they you almost claw back in again. You find a very small piece of blue fabric. Um, you find this very. Just gonna wait for Dan to put his headphones on. Okay. Yep. You find this very small piece of blue fabric. Um, it feels extremely old. It's completely sodden and soaking in blood in mud. Um. But you kind of look down at it and you begin to kind of examine it. As you see that there's this kind of small thread that's kind of been sewn through it in a slight shape. So we see um, sort of the otter sort of sat on your shoulder, Clove. As you're looking out at this, so we haven't spoken to you yet. Uh, as you just see this kind of greyness of the scene in front of you. Yeah, I think Clove sits down on the other side of Shana from from Nora, and she's just tears are streaming down her face, and she this like absence of life, right? This, there's nothing natural, or you know, she's she's been taught about you know cycles of life and 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 birth and 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 death and rebirth and. And none of that is what's happened here. And it's it's overwhelming. And she's heard the stories from her dad about what the black bottle does. And, and this is kind of her first time really seeing the scale of that. And, and she's really just kind of overwhelmed at, at the impact of it. And, you know, while it's affected her personally, it's not this is so much bigger than just her own experience with this so far and so i think she's really um emotional she all kind of like sit or stand or dorm around unless just you've still got this piece of fabric um you begin to kind of examine it could you do just a, a quick I'm going to say investigation for you. Let me just see if we've got any bombs going on. Yeah, you got some bombs there if you want to use it. Or I can't hear you, Dan. You're on mute. Mm -hmm. uh, at least it's a mute this time. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> can I, I've also got an inspiration from last time. Can I use that or does it run out when we sleep? Um, no, you've still got it now. So that's the one, one before. Lovely. Oh, I mean one on my sheet, the little dragon thing on my sheet. I think you gave it to me last <laughs> All time. All right, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll have I'll have my one from Daz. Thanks, Daz. Uh, Eighteen. Eighteen. Great. Okay. Um, you think this is about three hundred years old, maybe? Um, you recognise the blue for sure, as you see the kind of the top of a gold candle on it, and you think this is maybe a cloak or a tunic of the original firelights the uh guards uh, the personal guards to danny mage and do i have a sense of where where this might have come from why it's how it's been dropped is it just 
No, it just seems to be churned up in the dirt. So this could be something that has moved over time mm. and shifted around. But it's a good bet that there is that person from which this cloak came from is probably here somewhere. So would I deduce from that that possibly this is the result of the takeover? Or that it's been going on that long. And to think they promised to bring balance to the world, a better place and peace. And it was, it was all just horse shit. Like, this is probably the first time you've seen Illustrious like, start to lose his cool. Like the stoicism is starting to starting to form. I don't care what it takes. We get this child to safety. And we do it fast. Too right. We can't let this keep happening. This There's no balance here. Things. Oh. We done here? Yes. Nora's gonna get to her feet. Who's taking point? It didn't go well last time, but I can certainly try. I believe in you. If things go south, I will watch over you. And I give uh, a vigilant blessing, um, which I think means if it gets to it, you get advantage on initiative rolls. Okay. Nice. Nice. Um. I go over and scoop up Chenna. And he kind of like just tries to stop you. He looks up at you. And he kind of beckons you down. Illustrious drops down. It takes a while. <laughs> he puts his <laughs> hand in your pocket. And he pulls out the candle. He puts it down on the ground. And then he lights it as his flame kind of clicks through his fingers he kind of lights the candle the candle doesn't wave and it stays strong it's his light kind of fills this place and then he takes your hand and tries to get you up yeah i let him and i kind of give him the option to either travel in my arms or to walk he walks. Clove, I think you notice something as you walk through. Of you notice something on in China. So let's. Uh, you start walking across, and you kind of cut out. You've almost like come in. You've come into a very small part of this field, and then you're kind of coming back out in back into the forest again. Um. Okay, Clave, do you want to do your uh, your survival? Survive? No, sure. Is it a survival, can I ask, isn't it? Can yes. I ask, Joey, are we out of the woods in terms of triggering content? Yes, we are. There we go. Thank you very much. Thanks yeah. for reminding me, Dan, because I would not have remembered. Yeah. I think uh, with all of this, yeah, Clove is like looking at, at Chana and thinking about what Speaker Halu said. Um, and it's just like her resolve in all of this is just growing stronger and she kind of whispers to Chenna she's like we're gonna do everything we can he kind of looks up at you his eyes seem smaller like not as big and wide but there's still like a burning hope within them so he kind of like turns his head and carries on walking 
the defiant six-year-old. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, so you kind of look up at the sun. Oh, natural twenty. There it is. Yes. We finally find our way out. Of yes. Find it. Um. Yeah. You, by looking at where, you, by looking at suns and everything else, as you kind of go back in, you realise that you're probably <laughs> fairly central of this forest. So literally, the only thing to do is pick a direction and go. Um. So you kind of continue going west to kind of try and just push through the forest. Um, okay, so you kind of carry on. Let me just move your taking through. I mean, you're about there-ish. Actually, let's put you there. Okay, so you continue on for the rest of the night. Um, very eerie that there is just no creatures around. Um, there's nothing that seems to be around. Uh, until you start hearing, like, a cry for help. Um, the rest of you hear, like, what sounds like a gargling scream, but Clove, you hear the words, help me. As you kind of make your way into like another smaller clearing, it's almost like a glade. There's, um, <laughs> I don't know, sorry. Um, so you see that the in the center, as you walk in, there is this like stagnant pond. Uh, the trees around it seem to be dead or dying or struggling to live. There's thorns that kind of kick around the water itself, and the smell of like putrid fish and stale water sort of kicks through and then inside the middle of a pond there is a like a small island with what looks like a stone altar which lies a stick and you turn and you see that there is one of inside this one of the trees there is this bright green and of life that's sort of hiding inside or stuck inside one of the trees. As you see this thing screaming at you and it's going, help, help me, help me, help me. Please, you, 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 you understand me. I can see you understand me. As you turn and you see this yeah. creature. Um, I think you would probably know what this is. I'm going to let you know. You see this dryad sort of like stuck in a tree. But like melded into the tree's form itself. It's like, look, please, 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 just stop, please. I think Love's gonna turn to the others, and she's like, "We've gotta, we've gotta help it. It, it needs our help." That yeah, thing's asking for you. help. Can you not? You don't know what it's saying. Nope. Sounds like pain. <laughs> Gibberish. Yeah. Is it, is this, and I get it, but is this like a good idea? It's not going to be a trap. No, <laughs> it could be, but it's asking for our help. Please. There's so much death. The soil is so corrupted. What do, what do you need? Just how do we help you? Me. She kind of like the, the branches sort of like <laughs> twist and turn. And she kind of points over towards the um the pond. The stick. So I think Plova's like Trent, like telling everybody. Okay. Some, something about the stick. I don't. I don't know well, if it why wants. Is, why is the stick over there? If it wants it, how did this happen? Am I trapped here? Oh, no, no, yeah, he understands comments. So I'm just gonna crack on with that. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And he looks over at you and sees <laughs> that the rest of you can't understand. And it's like, uh, long time tricked here. Uh, watched from afar the key to help me. Is that common? Can I roll an insight check? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> so he kind of looks over at you, illustrious. He kind of looks across all of you. And it looks directly at you, Nora. It says, please... Please help. As you kind of start to feel like I really need to help this creature. Mm. Can you do a wisdom save for me, please. Ah, shit. Yeah. Not my best. You, Eleven. you were convinced this is the saviour <laughs> to the entire mission. You must Great. must must help this creature. Okay. Great. Right, guys, we've got to get that stick. This is not our mission. Got to get the kid to the border. This is a distraction. It needs our help. She's right. It needs our help. Isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? Aren't we supposed to be helping? The kid. Why is it more important to help one person and not another? Because Speaker Halu didn't die for a fucking tree, that's why. Whoa. Whoa. From a fur bulk? This person needs our help. I don't understand you. I thought that was the whole point of what we're supposed to be doing. Isn't it? Don't we help the people who can't help themselves? This one's stuck in a tree. I'd say they can't help themselves. <clears throat> I think Clove kind of looks to to Chenna for like what what do they want at this moment? I think Chenna kind of is like transfixed on the stick. Please, as it kind of looks towards you, Loretta. Please help me. You do a wisdom save, please. Fuck. <laughs> Uh, oh god, it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's imperative oh. that you save, Fuck. that you help this dryad. Look, I, 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 I guess we could do it quickly. Quickly yeah, do it, the great. quicker we can get going. It just wants a stick, we can do that. We can get the stick, it's just a stick, come on, let's go. It just wants a stick. I'm going to start making my way over to see what, if I can get a closer view of what this... I'm guessing it's water around it, is that a moat kind of thing? Yeah, that's the pond, that's the pond. Yeah, I'd like dirty, to make my way over there then. Dirty water. Um, as you kind of walk through, you can kind of feel these... You look up and you see that there's this like lights that are sort of moving around. They're very dim as they're sort of floating around this, this kind of glade. It's like, yes! The, the, the closer the stick Get closer to sure sure thing sure um wait hold uh, and i think clove is gonna be like let's maybe maybe ter i can always get terry back let let <laughs> see if terry can go grab the stick as terry sort of like jumps off your shoulder then <laughs> yeah I kind of looks you in the <laughs> eyes Sorry, Stay safe, little buddy. She's gonna send Terry over to get lucky the stick. Stone out. Just yeah. Press it, it back in his arm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he kind of climb. You see him climb through the the brush. Um, and I think uh, Plove is also like looking through. She kind of goes yeah. frozen. She's still like got a hand on Shana, but she's like seeing through Terry right now. Yeah, so you kind of like feel the pain of the thorns sort of like scratching on their fur. 
uh, as it drops into the water and it's putrid you can you almost you almost sort of stand there and you, the rest of you see clothes sort of like slightly sort of foaming at the mouth <laughs> slightly just from the the mixture from the two from, from the eyes <laughs> of the familiar inside this putrid water um as it swims through you can see there's like an amount of just dead fish and sort of this water is lifeless completely lifeless so it climbs out the other side completely covered in this like green algae goo <laughs> and runs over and as soon as it grabs hold of the stick you just suddenly hear it's like this as these there's this party sort of appear next to you uh of satyrs and darklings and it looks as if it is, looks like some sort of um uh like centaur but they seem to be more elfish in their look and uh, they just start going and you helped us to free our friend free our friend and sort of start singing the pan pipes start kicking in and i want you all to do wisdom saving throws for me please as the pan pipes sort of start playing through as they start to mesmerize you with their music um another no natural pie. 20. oh yes yeah, that's nine yeah there we go beautiful nine 19. For 19. natural know, 20. 20 as well yeah Fantastic. As you sort of play hey, the cobra, so wise. fuck your pampire. Um, Loretta, Loretta, you are completely enthralled by this music. Um, as you can see, these this this group of face sort of said, they're like, "Thank you so much," and they sort of run towards you, clopping away as they run up mm. towards you. As the dryer jumps out of the tree and sort of stands next to next to the wrong It's like, "We're so happy that you are here. Look, look we, we we've made you a feast." And they sort of lean across. Loretta, you are like salt thanks like a feast yeah we helped <laughs> as you look over you see things like uh like purple pears you see uh starlight berries you can see uh these beautiful um, apples that, of colors that you've never seen before many of these fruits have not been available inside the empire for decades and yet here they are in abundance at a table for you wow you got the real fancy shit Sky when like sort of started. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, uh, no. Uh, Nora what? just like sees Loretta moving and just grabs the back of her cape, whatever is nearest, and is like they pulling hard. Purple apples. Yeah, no, no, they don't. <laughs> it's like, you don't look, I'm a gnome. Here's the thing about the Fey. Just don't. Never eat it. Right. Never eat it. <laughs> don't. <laughs> Well, just, just, just come here then. It says this. this, um, this no, one. not so pan pipes either. No. And it pops no, over. No. <laughs> the satire kind of pops over and goes like, "Look, my name's Bobbit." He pops his hand out. Bobbit. Oh, yeah. See, Bobbit, and he shakes, he shakes Loretta's hand and pours Loretta closer towards the table. Mm. I've still got hold. I'm still holding onto the back. <laughs> As you kind of like another one comes over and like starts bothering you around your feet and sort of takes the tries to take the uh the cloak off of your hands. Mm. <laughs> no, I'm like clinging, I'm I'm clinging on. Uh, I'm gonna turn around and go, Can so someone want to help? I think we should get out of here really quite soon, like now. Uh, I'm gonna strive over and literally just pick up Loretta by the no, no, great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then they all go <laughs> and walk wow. away. Wow. What, what, are you, what are you doing? Put me down. And they just turn and they say something that I think only you understand, um, illustrious. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very old tongue word. Uh, old Furbolg word. Um, which means like, um, like precious one. They're like, you're so tall. And then one goes, and so strong. And it was like, yeah, and so strong. And what I hear under that precious one. Mm -hmm. I, I just turn in terms of like you know it as a it's a it's a a word of endearment and like a very extremely old verb word, like the words you used to use when you were in the forest. Mm -hmm. 
I don't fucking trust these guys. <laughs> do you want to do an insight? Yeah, I do. Okay, right. Okay, let's do an insight. <laughs> 26. 26. Okay, let's see a roll on there and there, shall we? Let's uh, look. What do they roll? Oh, I can't seem to get my cheat up. Not that one. <laughs> you know when you go, it's not that one. 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 Let's go back to this one. Not, not the dragon. You don't want to use the dragon. He's hiding in the trees. <laughs> Okay, let's go for this one. Oh, it's so tense. Oof. You Oof. feel that they are obviously trying to ingratiate themselves with you mm -hmm. in particular. Um, but they really want you to stay. It doesn't feel like there's anything bad in it. That they really want you to stay. What do you want? For you to have dinner. It's really tasty. It's this kind of like small light that sat by a, sat on one of the pears. I don't eat fey food. Oh. Oh, it's all natural. Organically grown. Organically grown. What's happened to what's happened to the little green thing that we've apparently saved? Like, has it has anything changed? It's still in the yeah, tree. They sort of like swung around behind you, and sort of like stood there behind you, and they're kind of like pushing you forward. Like, come on, come and have some food. Mm -mm. I'm not hungry. Well, then at least and they sort of turn, and you see that there's sort of like a very large chair. Take the seat of honor. Take the seat of honor. I just got Munchkin land in my head. <laughs> <laughs> um. <clears throat> Fine. <laughs> so you go over and you take a seat down in the chair and he is so comfortable I mean it is the most comfortable chair that you've ever sat on you're still restrained enough not to eat anything mm -hmm. but you're sort of sat at the chair um, Loretta is sort of I'm guessing come with you because you were carrying Loretta <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm like sat on Santa's lap right now <laughs> <laughs> But I think maybe there's a moment when you sit down on the chair, you like, ah, oh, and you release slightly and you let go of Loretta. Mm. Well, this beats the floor. It's like, oh, he looks so, so important there. It's like, yes, he looks very important. And then he just hears, <laughs> really important. Come, come, come sit. This uh, says Bobbit to the others. Oh no, thank you. I'm I'm I've just eaten, oh. actually. Um, what about is like pulls up like a ping pong ball and two ping pong balls. <laughs> Maybe a game. Do you have games? Oh damn! <laughs> <laughs> it's in the it's back. <laughs> oh. And it's like turds and it's just like perfect ping pong, like, you know, the, like the um, camping ping pong tables that you get that like are in the middle of the camping yeah. sites, the concrete ones. Mm -hmm. It's one of those sort of sat there, perfect condition. Great. She says, I, it's tempting, but honestly, I'm fine. I, I think we'll just um, sort of you do your little concert or whatever and uh, and we'll be on our way. Where? Elsewhere. Where, what? But you know, you can't leave. Yeah, that was my fear. You see, um, but where would you want to go? We are gonna leave. Oh. I've got. We've got an appointment. Oh, an appointment. Yeah. What's yeah. an appointment? And one said, "Turned around and said, it's like sausages." Oh. Mm, we got to go and pick up an appointment. Right. Well. You're just going to have to sit and enjoy it. Maybe you're just going to miss that appointment. Because you've got nowhere else to go. 
Maybe and it sort of turns. And come back. And as you kind of, t as his arm kind of does this, you see that around you, the mm. um, the area you, that was once dead, you see as okay, uh, you see is like lush and full of life around you. Right. The tr the water is like full of beautiful like life-giving water the fish are jumping out there's this huge purple tree and inside the, the bark of the purple tree is this kind of long like stick which now can be called a staff as it sort of sits inside the center the trees are there growing upwards the, there's loads of these fruits that are hanging down the grasses seem green and luscious and you see these beautiful um sort of sun tulips sort of sitting there with their yellow main petals and the orange that runs around them down to this bright yellow stem and you could just sort of the peace that's around this space is unnerving to you nora <laughs> yeah yeah she um you see her sort of look round. she goes like yeah it's really nice but it's not real Oh, it's real. It's definitely real. It's our home. Here. Here in the Feywild. Yeah. But it's not our home. And I think we'd like to go now. Really? As the sort of the faces sort of drop a little. As you kind of turn We're around. We're just making a mess of the place. As you turn around, you see Loretta is sort of like... Bleeding. Oh my god, Loretta, I swear, I swear to god. <laughs> All of them don't. Ordinarily, you gotta go to the farmer's markets to get this stuff. Let's all get it. Channel will make you a nice pair later on, okay? Just please don't. We have to leave. And we're already gonna struggle. <laughs> it's like you can't Illustrious, tries, Illustrious tries to get up from the chair. Okay, oh, can you do a strength check for me, please? As you suddenly <laughs> start oh, trying to stand up. And actually, you know, like when your body feels like you're on like Venus or something, uh, yeah. and, and, like your body weight is like twice as heavy. Yeah. Right, the common feeling that we've all had of being on Venus. Yes. Welcome to your thirties. <laughs> Sixteen, yeah. <laughs> you managed to kind of like get about two inches up. And then, <laughs> and then they feel like the chair is going to lift itself and these vines come up the chair and just pulls it down and you sit back down again. As you turn and look over your shoulder towards the rest, of, towards Clove, you see that behind Clove there is this kind of like cloud that's around them, and behind it you can see the like the dead trees from your world. Oh fuck! As the music's see, turned on us. As you can see, I know, right? As you can see, the clouds sort of slightly beginning to kind of come closer and closer in, like it's closing behind Clove. Uh, as uh, so it's just like you can't leave and if you really wanted to you could never do anyway where would you want to go this is the best place it could possibly be and then you hear another like little firefly kind of go past you going <laughs> as it kind of flies around it's like another one goes let's have some beer beer and there's like a big cheer of beer as <laughs> now they all kind of like suddenly all these beer glasses sort of appear at the table and loretta's just <laughs> looking at it all like oh my god <laughs> beer <laughs> I don't need to get out of this chair to blast you out of existence. Ooh, there's the all kind of going <laughs> one unison voice. <laughs> oh, you're just going to have to sit there. Be the very important person that you are. All right, guys, let's roll initiative then, please. <laughs> <laughs> You've still got advantage, oh, Melissa. I? No, adva no, Melissa. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, good lord, Joseph. Sorry, I just... Oh, <laughs> oh my god, they're great rolls. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Come on, guys. Come on. Ooh. Okay. Wherever that is, that's about 20. Cool. Better rolls. <laughs> All the nat 20s. <laughs> My roll 20s had a, a moment. 
Oh, Philly's here. Philly just arrived. Hey, Philly. <laughs> just in time, <laughs> Philly. <laughs> Straight in. Okay. We're all about to get trapped in the Feywild. <laughs> Okay, let's just add the round in. And that's how this became a three-year campaign, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> right, there we go. Great. Okay. All right, I'm coming. It's okay, we can wait. Okay. As I choose the new music for this uh, battle. Illustrious is literally last. That makes so much sense. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think we've got a bit Sorry, of time. Sorry, Joe, you'll have to put me in. It's, uh, it's, I'm going to pop you in now. Um, Thank you. Where are you? There you are. Okay, so uh, we're going to start with Clove. Okay. Um, there's been a lot happening. Clove is very confused. <laughs> uh, and I think she's just going to, I think, more than anything, like, seeing illustrious like go and sit on the chair and then not be able to get back up out of it that's when she's like oh, okay something something's not good here this is this is not what it was supposed to be mm -hmm. uh and so i think she kind of you know takes out her her staff and waves it in front of her and this tidal wave of water goes crashing into the line of fey uh <laughs> as clove cast tidal wave yes uh, yes yes Holy. so i need a uh, dc 14 dex saving throws i believe i will double check that quickly okay so you want one for yeah. each type or would you like one all to roll yeah. roll one for each type one for each type yeah uh, do you say <laughs> dex save like your so number one yeah and if they fail they are also knocked prone oh Oh, so the satyrs they succeed as they jump out of the way of the water. The darklings. Okay, so they take half damage. Yeah. Yeah. The darklings fail. Uh, the darkling elder. It's gonna fail. Honor oh. can succeed. And uh, finally, the one at the back. Uh, yeah, because it's thirty feet long, ten feet wide. So okay, let me have a look at that. So if I win. Ban this new like um, ruler options for the VT sort of uh, expander for roll twenty, and they've done this really cool thing where you can do like big um, like cones and stuff. There we go. Oh nice! Oh yeah, you hit everybody for surezies. Um, right. And the last one fails as well. So the satyrs are going to take half of that damage. Yeah, and they're not knocked prone. So how much is that? Eleven. Uh, Eleven. 11 yeah nice sorry about this is gonna take me a little bit of time that's okay great mm. turn. yeah that was a brilliant first turn mm. way to crit yeah. the initiative whilst they're all bunched up <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah the uh yeah. the spell was too perfect for clove anyway i had to take it so i'm glad i got to use mm. it <laughs> oh mate yeah so this is lots of death going on here so do you want to explain how the darklings all die <laughs> Um, yeah, so I think this, like, crest of water just, like, appears and then, like, crashes down on top of them as they just, like, evaporate. Nice. Just washed away. Very, yeah. very nice. Great first turn. As we move through... Is there anything else you want to do? Um, I... The only thing, uh, I might do is, uh, move... Trying to think of like where we actually are. Yep. So the I've just drawn a line that is the portal that you can see closing oh, okay. behind you. Okay. Uh, Let's move. I think I'm just gonna move. Oh, illustrious and Loretta. Yeah. I'm gonna mm. need you guys to do some do some rolls on that as well. Oh, we were over there. Yeah, you're all yeah. over there. Oh um, shoot. There was that was my fault, but um, what we'll do is do them with advantage because uh, that's my screw up. I'll take okay. deck save, right? Deck save, deck save yeah, deck with save. advantage. Ooh, okay. okay so you, need, you take eleven each. <laughs> All right. No, that's my bad. That's my bad. I didn't move them into the right places. Okay. Um, which 
Which of these are not prone, Joe? Any of the ones that are alive not prone? Uh, this one is prone, so I'll mark them for you. Thank you. That one. And this one. Okay, great. Okay. Great. Um, and sorry, just for my clarity, so the idea is that, like, for us to get back, we want to get through this portal before it closes, probably. probably. This is not, like... Probably. darkness coming for us this is like okay yeah um i think she's gonna just like with like turn to chenna and and like suggest that they move closer uh to the portal and she, uh she's kind of like positioning herself so that she's between as many of them and chenna as possible yeah i think um yeah she you, you looks up and chenna is sort of stood still his eyes are transfixed on the staff in the tree. Okay. Okay, that's her turn. Okay, so then we're going to move on to Loretta. Am I charmed still to want to stay? I think you're still charmed at this moment of time, yeah. Um, okay. In actually, that case, actually, let's do the wisdom save. Even though, let's do the wisdom even though you save. took damage. That's what I'm saying. Let's do the wisdom save. Mm. Cool, okay. It doesn't say anything in the spell from the pan pipes that they get rid of through wisdom, but I think it's worth checking it out. Nope, you're still... 10 on that, so yeah, still, yeah. You're still, you're still charmed. <laughs> um, because <laughs> I feel like being a bit of a dick, I'm going to go over to uh, this one that's here. And I use my action to help them get up from prone. I'm really sorry about my friends. It doesn't mind if it's all rude. It's <laughs> really lovely. And, uh, up. and I'm going to bonus action second wind. Oh my god. Uh, which I think. Oh, crikey, it's been so long. I think it's just a d10 that I get to roll to uh, re get damage. Uh, Oh, sorry, regain 10. Oh. Sweet. Woo! <laughs> nice. That's my 10. <laughs> All right, the satyrs. Okay, let's see what I got left with the old satyrs. Oh, this satyr over here, in fact. Um, okay, so they are going to start moving towards um, you, I think. Perfect. This one um. <laughs> uh, no? Okay. Um, and they are going to start playing some pan pipes in front of you and dancing. Can you Great. do a, a wisdom saving throw for me, please? Yes. Uh, this is magic, right? So i realize i should have had advantage on any wisdom saves against magic because i'm of my gnomic goodness well i don't think it's really magic okay charming effect so <laughs> either way you succeed it anyway and he, he sort of like dance around it and you just look at it and like, what the fuck are you doing <laughs> as, you're, as it does absolutely nothing and you're absolutely fine okay um okay. however the darkling elder is going to now going to do some attacks yeah um and what it's going yeah. to do is oh yeah so it's going to move <laughs> it runs over to here towards uh you clove and it's going to come in with this attack. So first attack I'm going to take with advantage um, from my lovely hi-fi friend. 24 to mm. hit. And that hits for 5 piercing. And as they had advantage on the attack, I'm going to give you another 3d6 as well. Ooh. For another 9 on top of that, so a total of 14 of piercing damage. Second attack comes in. Oh level Lord. five, level five. Seventeen. <laughs> Does that hit? Yep. Yep. Uh, for another six, on top of that. Okay. Okay. Thanks. High five. Okay. Satire. Satire. 
Satya's gonna <laughs> just kind of look over to you, uh, Lustrous, and says, oh, You look very pretty in your very important seat. And uh, runs over this way towards you guys. So, like, they are now starting to kind of swarm on Clove and. Mm. Um, and uh, sorry, Nora, uh, as they carry on attacking. So Satya's going to come in with their short sword attack. And misses as it sort of swipes at you and misses completely. All right. All right. All right. All right. So the, uh, the I think they're called Alcid. Alcid. Alcid sounds about right. Yeah, sounds about right. Um, yeah. So they're going to try to start taking aim. And they're going to take aim over uh, towards Nora and go for their attack. Mm -hmm. They look really cool there. I'm actually going to have to just quickly show this because it looks really, really cool. There we go. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, super, yep. super very cool. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very nice. Great. Tome, very nice. Tome of Beasts, these ones, I think. Um, all right, so let's go for a ranged oh. spear attack. Ow. 19 to hit? Yep. Hits. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. Hits for two piercing. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, very small little attack there. Good. Okay. Okay, so this satyr here is going to run over to you again, uh, illustrious. Panpipe time. Can you give me a um, wisdom set? <laughs> yeah. Oh, natural one. Oh, it's a mighty fine chair. A mighty fine chair. <laughs> And those apples look delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and what a wonderful tune, as you can hear, they sort of like the pan pipes sort of playing through. Mm -hmm. uh, the last satyr sort of looks up uh, and you sort of see them do this. As this sort of like the ground begins to sort of like shake slightly. Um, as we see the, the the ground in front in front of the portal begin to kind of move around slightly, and these vines start to kind of grow out Ow. in front of it. All right, and then we're around to illustrious. So illustrious, you are currently charmed. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to allow a, a check at the end of your turn. Okay, um, and I'm uh, what what sort of. Am I restrained to the chair? Am I grappled to the chair? Am I what to the chair? I think technically you'd be you'd be grappled. However, you're happy with that grappling. If yeah, that yeah. So I, so I think so. I think for for my turn, I'm gonna sort of like shift around in the chair and then just go. Ah, uh, yeah, that's the spot. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and just sort of lounge back. Maybe try and put my foot up on a stool. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Nope. Nope. Okay, great. Okay, Nora. <laughs> do I get my wisdom save at the end? Oh, yes, you do your wisdom save now. Oh, yeah. Let's see if you get another that one. Ten. <laughs> no, no, yeah, you are still, you are still absolutely charmed. So bad. Charmed by these folk. Boy. Okay, Nora, <laughs> you have got uh, a dancing, a dancing satyr in front of you. Uh... Yeah, I think I'm. I'm gonna try and kill it. Uh, <laughs> it's it's getting getting in my face. Uh, so I'm gonna go with my um, short sword, in one hand. Ooh, not gonna uh, do it. A nine is not gonna do it. I'm afraid. Give it another go. Dagger. Are you doing with your other hand? Is that the idea? Mm hmm. Fourteen. Fourteen hits. Hooray! He's just dancing so Before. fast that I can't. <laughs> yeah, he's sort of like like. Cut it in a second. It's like, ah, way. <laughs> it's that kind of moment of weasel. <laughs> so, as you stop it. <laughs> as we kind of come through, is there anything else you'd like to do? Or you used a bonus action now, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, it's all over. Okay, cool. Shana is going to go this way. All right. Uh, so, we're back round to Clove. Uh, okay, I think Clove takes her staff out and then she's going to kind of look up to the sky and be like, okay, Dad, 
and then she slams it into the ground and this like storm cloud appears uh, over a hundred foot radius and then a lightning bolt strikes the one that's right in front of her. Oh, so I'm casting yes. cult lightning. Is it this one here or the satyr? Yeah. Uh, no, the uh, the first one, Get the top one. one. Great. Yeah. Uh, oh, stick it in there. Dexterity. So, uh, yeah, once again, dex save, DC 14. Nice. Oh, it makes it. So it takes mm. half, half damage? Uh, I believe so. Let me double check. Or is it a save and uh, suck? Yeah, ha half on a successful save. Okay, cool. Um, so suddenly... But this, the storm is like still there. It's yeah. it's still rumbling. So suddenly like this, this thing is sort of like... It's sort of like this lightning kind of comes down upon it. Um, and so you can see these kind of cracks start to appear on its skin. Um, across its body as it sort of becomes brighter and brighter and brighter. Can you do a constitution saving throw for me as it suddenly explodes oh. in light? <laughs> um, and I'm just going to get check my distances on this and just see if everybody... Eight. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, let's do a blast radius. Yep, that's everyone. Oof. Okay. Uh, everyone needs to do a constitution saving throw for me, please. 14? 14, good. Oh, not 20. Very good. Hey! I'm far too comfy to get hurt. <laughs> yeah, it's almost better maybe if you need to take. Mm. Right. Okay, cool. So those that were below 13, um, you are going to take this damp forward of this damage all of this damage uh g -G six and you are blind uh so that's eight uh radiant damage and you're blind and then the dan and rowan you take half and you are not blind nice do i do another save for taking damage nope all right all right <laughs> okay it's a huge explosion Piaui. Uh, and I think, Clove, is there anything else you'd like to do on your turn? No, she's... Yeah, no, I've got nothing. Got nothing. Okay, cool. Loretta, you are blind. I am. So let's quickly mark you as blinded. Um, okay, so I'm blinded. I'm still charmed. Do I, like, sort of, with the fact that everyone's fighting, do I still feel that kind of, like, obviously bond with my group and, like, sort of, I obviously don't want them to come to harm. I just want to stay. Okay, so you want to, like, force the force your fight on the wheel save, on the wisdom save. Well, okay, I, I, I want to resist this charm if I can, because I kind of feel this in, inherent, like, kind of, I think, a pull to either side, I think. Yeah, I'm up for that. So I reckon... Um... Oh no, <laughs> that's a shame. Sorry, I'm just doing the con save in the corner. Um, I'm going to give you advantage on the wisdom save if you use your action to try and break it. Ooh, I'll do that. Yeah. 16. Yeah, you break it. You're no longer oh, fine. You've still, but, got, um, you've still got your bonus. Um. Okay, bonus, bonus, bonus. I've already used second win, so I don't actually think I've got anything. Yeah, I have nothing. <laughs> okay, cool. But yeah, I'm, I'm done. Okay, the satire oh, yeah. in front of you, then um, Nora. I'm gonna go in with short sword attack. Mm -hmm. Should be doing advantage on those. Um, 21 to hit. Not really any need. Yeah, that, hits, that'll do it. Hits for five. Okay. Okay. Now the vines are going to stay there. This sat here next to you, Clove. It's going to come in for an attack uh, with the short bow. Uh, not short yeah. bow, my apologies. Short sword. We'll reroll that. Oh. Oh, dearie me. This is going to be that good. <laughs> it's for nine. Uh, Clove is down. Oh! Oh! Okay, so he kind of like, he kind of says, you just need to stay at the party! And he sort of like stabs you into the into the stomach. 
as you sort of like drop down onto your knees and fall. Um, this kind of breaks Chudders. Sort of look at the at the um, at the 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 staff as he turns her back and fires off. Uh, I think he's gonna yeah, it's fucking not gonna not gonna do a fireball. That's just so silly. <laughs> um, Finger of death. Uh, he just fires off three wisps of like like these like direct wisps of light uh, <laughs> over at this uh, s this satyr and hits him with magic missile and kills it. Um, Yay! However, yeah. he turns and just dashes towards the water. Uh, um. <laughs> as he continues his mission on. Um, okay, so we're round to the Alcid. Alcid. Yes. Alcid. <laughs> Alcid. Alcid. Yeah, we'll go for that. Okay. All sides. And um, goes to attack on Nora as well. Still not noticing that the others are actually knocked out of their wisdom saves yet. So. And mm. uh, goes for another spear attack. Oh my word, oh. how many crits can I roll uh, today? Uh, oh, oh god. Oh. <laughs> Let's have a look. Only rolls for eight piercing damage. Uh, okay, I can see you though, right? Yes. So I'm gonna uh, un uncanny dodge. Okay, quick. Just take four. Baby Lurs. Okay, through to this satyr. I think the satyr's noticed, Loretta, that you're not eating. And he goes, You don't want a pear. Oh. Can't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> so leaps across the table uh, and goes for the attack uh, with advantage. Yeah. Okay. Fourteen. Um, doesn't hit. Does not hit. As it gets like goes to try and stab you, and you're like turning, <laughs> trying to like. <laughs> <laughs> it just... I smell the pears. <laughs> <laughs> As you manage to kind of, it kind of just completely miss it. Uh, this one's going to step over and it's going to go for the attack as well. Why the hell not? Crazy hits for That's gonna six piercing damage. Six piercing. Oh. All right, comfy chair, illustrious. Oh yeah. Um, I think sort of. Seeing, um, uh, Ooh. seeing, um, uh, just a query, very quickly. You've been given some inspiration from GB Daz, uh, Melissa. Uh, I have yeah. a feeling that's for your death saves. <laughs> <laughs> very funny. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. <laughs> that's okay. Um, have I got one too? It's by my head. Um, have I got one as well. I don't think you used that one, didn't you? Yes, you did use that one from earlier. Okay, no worries. Um, yeah, I think um, uh, sort of seeing Clove go down sort of like shakes shakes illustrious a little bit out of his uh, um, out of his comfort uh, comfy chairness. And uh, I would like to. Can I use my action to try and get out of this mm -hmm. first as well? Yeah, with advantage. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on. Twenty three. That was lucky, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. Like, that advantage, you know? It'll shake your um, head and you kind of see around you this is this is all bullshit. Yeah. It's real. Can I but move? It's all bullshit. I can't move. You I don't think you can get out of it with a bonus action. That's the only problem. I'm still I'm still grappled. Alright, sweet, 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 sweet. What is that? No, it's not. Um Okay, so with my bonus action, um, we are going to. Where are we going to do it? Which which token is clove? This one down here. Okay, cool. Um, so, um, I'm gonna come swooping into this. Oh, can I do that? Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to cast Spiritual Weapon um, here, just behind me. I can't remember what it looked like before. What was it? It looked like it was an eye. That's it. Nope, not the eye catcher. You know, that's a different one. <laughs> <laughs> Which 
Bear with me a second. It's okay. You say here. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Um, and then I'm going to attack this satyr with it. <sighs> Ten. I'm afraid not. That does not hit. This does not hit. All right. No worries. Um, yeah, that's my turn. Okay. That's your second round to Nora. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm just... <clears throat> I'm going to uh, disengage from this guy mm -hmm. in front of me. And I'm just moving over to Chana, and I just want to grab hold of him. So I don't know if you want me, I can use my action to like grapple or something, because uh, he's just not, he can't go in that water. Okay. Okay, so he's he's struggling, but you are stronger than them. Yeah, basically just sort of a bear hug situation here. <laughs> uh, and you're just going to grapple, hold on, is that your act? That's all you're going to do? I'm holding off for dear life right now, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, this is really through here. So then this, uh, the portal begins to shrink. Mm. As we're through to Loretta. Loretta, you are no longer blinded. Oh. As it's sort of like the, the <laughs> light sort of like clears away. Okay. Um... Oh, she'd have been clothed first. I keep switching between you guys. Which I think I'm quite enjoying yeah. this, like, this random going mechanic. This, that's the happening. second time we've rolled the same <laughs> initiative, too. <so. laughs> wow. Okay, so we'll carry on with Loretta and then we'll go to Clove. Okay. Um, I am then going to just, like, sort of, as the vision comes back and just look forward and just, like, oh no. <laughs> and then just uh, wailing with a uh, rapier on the one that's right in front of me. I think probably the one to the left. Is this one here? Yeah. Um, so, 24 hit? Yeah, 24 hits. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I would like to uh, expand this superiority die to make it a sweeping attack as well. Uh, oh, oh, wait. Um, so I need to do the damage on it though. I can never remember how to do damage. It's just that uh, if you press rapier in the chat, ah, there we are. six. So six damage to the one on the left, uh -huh. and then I expand the superiority die. And to make it a sweeping attack, um, do, 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 I can hit another target within five feet of my reach. And if the original attack roll would hit the second creature, it takes damage equal to the number I roll on my superiority dice. So that's another d10 roll. Uh, oh, six again. So six nice. to both. To who? To the other satire? Uh, yes. Satire. And then second attack. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe. So uh, should I take the one rolled or should I uh, <laughs> roll again? You just roll again. <laughs> no. uh, 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 17 to help. Who are you hitting? Uh, there's one to the left again. Okay, yeah, that hits. Uh, for 10 damage. Ooh, big hit. Big, big hit. It looks fairly screwed over, this poor pan playing satire. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so that's uh, 7. I can't do that again, I don't think. Yeah, you can do it again. Every attack you should you could use superiority type. Yeah, I'll, I'll burn the other one to um, hit the other one again. Nice. So, uh, 1d10 again. So that's 7 to the other one. Really lovely. They're both looking fairly screwed over right now. Oh, in that case, I may as well action surge. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that one! Oh. Oh. Well, my house rules. I'm going to take an attack on that. Um, Go for it. Does, does he not get advantage for flanking with me? Okay, so 20 to hit, so it hits you for 7 piercing damage. As you kind of I go in copy. for that next attack, it sort of read your movements and started to mm. read your style. Yeah. It sort of moves across and like behind themselves, like, and, like sort of stabs She's you just in swinging it around constantly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I don't. Oh! Sorry, I have half thing luck. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, you can re-roll it. Okay, I'll oh. allow it. I'll allow it. 
So, uh, re-roll. 17. Oh, man. Yeah, take the advantage. I want to see the crit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so how do I do the crits on damage? You just hit the, the rapier uh, on the chat. Yeah, it'll things. do both. As, as normal, it'll do both. Oh, yeah, and then, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Tell me what that looks like. <laughs> okay, so I yeah. think I'll probably kind of just lunge and as they anticipate the movement, like I've been doing the same thing again, I'm just going to like definitely just throw the rapier into the other hand and just stab with the left and right into the eye. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just pull it away. <laughs> this guy who's blind now, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> really, really lovely. Uh, I see. <laughs> the field looks, definitely looks less as it was before. Okay, Clove. Yeah. The death saving throw. Mm-hmm. 19. Oh, yeah. 19. Yeah. Very nice. The first one is a successful. Very, very nice. Okay, there are three, two. This that's it here. It's going to attack you, of course, Nora. Yes. 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 Yeah. 13? No. And it misses, unfortunately. <clears throat> okay, this one, this, these acid... Alseed. Alseed. Anaseed. Anaseed sounds great. Um, is going to go in for a spear attack um, two handed uh, at Loretta. <coughs> and misses completely as it tries to like swing through. You're already in the middle of your other eye move. So you switch it over Can... and it's like the spear comes through here. Just stab the other one in the eye uh, as, he, as it misses. Can I use my uh, another spear to die to use repost as a reaction? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, so I get a melee weapon attack against them. Yep. 20 ticks. Yeah, it hits. For 11 damage. Very, very nice. Yeah, this looks. This one's looking looking okay, but it is, uh, is struggling to its feet. Okay, so this satyr that's with you is going to move around to here. For some unknown reason, it doesn't understand why it moves to this this place, but it feels as if it <laughs> might get some sort of advantage by standing there as it goes oh. in for an attack on you, Loretta, with advantage. 24 to hit, or 8 piercing damage. Okay. Illustrious. Um, okay, so Illustrious um, is seeing... Uh, clove bleeding out and it's going to try and break this grapple because would you believe 35 feet away just out oh, of the range of no all the things way. <laughs> um no. so could i can i have a can i have a strength save to try and either break the grapple mm -hmm. or to try and like fling the chair to one side so i at least go five feet closer <laughs> all right let's do let's do the athletics check then please i'm looking i've okay. got a number in my mind Okay. Come on, Athletic. Natural one. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much, if I stick an object in any battlefield, Illustrious will end up being stuck by it. So it doesn't matter if it's a turning thing to open a gate or yeah, if it's yeah. a chair, like, poor Illustrious. Yeah, you are stuck, unfortunately. <laughs> No, it's a natural one. I actually I rock back and forth and fall the other way, and I'm now 10 feet away. <laughs> yeah, you're now 40 feet away. <laughs> oh, mate, I'm so sorry, but no, that is That's it. Unless okay. you have any um, bonus, you want to move your... Yeah, bonus action, I'll move my uh, spiritual weapon. Um, I don't think I have control of it, but I'd like to move it over to this one here. To where? So if you move it one square to the right for me. Um, and then I will attack again. I'm just going to check something. Uh, yeah. yeah, I would highly recommend Ooh. that you go there. Mm -hmm. Do you do you allow advantages with spiritual weapons? I do. I don't allow advantages to, to be created from it, but it, oh. it can get advantage itself. That's how I kind of play it. Gotcha. Thank you very much, DM. I will take that 16 if that's okay. Yep, sure. 16 and 16 just about hits. <laughs> um, for eight force damage. Oh, lovely! Yeah, it's the outs. Out. Oh, I just undid the wrong one. Eight. Yeah, the outseed 
is, is yeah looking very much worse for wear now very very <clears> much so okay so we're through to nora yes oh shit uh, sorry okay oh it's something i need to do i'll do it after your turn okay uh so what mm -hmm. what can i do dm with this child under my arm because it's not it's actually going to be about the same size as i am yeah i think you could you could move it 10 feet like you would do with any other grapple yeah yeah okay i think yeah, I'm going to disengage and I'll just move us both further closer to here. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to go like, we need to go. <laughs> you don't need to disengage just so you know, just to give you three options on your um, bonus. Because you're still... Oh, will that guy not hit me if I go by? Well, you're still, you're still in his range. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, perfect. I mean... Nothing else you want to do anyway. Um, yeah, no, not really. Okay, so as you kind of like, we need to go, suddenly you are over here. Oh, great. As the child <laughs> takes you on a little misty step till. Uh, yep, I'm going as well. <laughs> and he, what he does is he go, reaches his arm out and grabs hold of the staff. Okay. Pulls it from the tree. Nice. Um, Sword in the stone. So Unlimited power. <laughs> <laughs> I think from your, from there, you see through the portal and you see there's a slightly more green on the other side than there was before. Okay. On the other side of the portal? Yep. Okay. As the portal gets a little bit smaller. Yeah. Okay, close. No. Oh, can I use my inspiration to roll that again? Yes, you can. There we go. Oh, oh, no. Where are you at? Okay. One, one on one. Plus one fail. Plus one, one okay. fail. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, no. so, you know. Loretta. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, it's going to be a rapier attack to uh, Sata. Um, oh. Double on that one! I'm taking the attack on that. D double halfling. <laughs> double halfling. Oh, double halfling. Yeah, oh, I get to reroll. Yeah, you do get to um, reroll like, them. Oh, yeah. thank, thank God someone's remembering. Uh, 19. Yeah, that hits. Uh, for six piercing oh, damage. So close, but no bananas. Oh, I'll have to use my second attack. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Natural! <laughs> yeah. How do I go even double that once to double that 20? That's mental. Oh, that is the best. I am so happy with that so much. Just a, just, just one in 1600 chance of that happening. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, I'm going to have to ask you for a second time this evening, Loretta. What does that look like? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I think, um, yeah, it's like so with the other one, I kind of uh, definitely kind of put it into the other hand. And I now realize that I've been attacking with my like my non dominant hand. So I just switch it back <laughs> to the right and then just bring it in and just drive it straight through the temple and then just pull it out and then just turn towards the creature on my right, like sort of the splatter of blood just like falling towards mm. them. You're next. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else at all you'd like to do? Um, why not make that a uh, superiority die and make it a sweeping attack? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so looking um, for looking for seven. <laughs> oh, you're not getting it. Not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as you slam it into, like, slice it across one of its like. Those big muscles that horses have, like on their chest, they're just about here. You slice across there, there's sort of fibers kind of open up. And as it sort of like looks at you, it's like, <laughs> they sort of fey language. <laughs> that's what, that's what fey language sounds like. <laughs> um, 
Okay, the satyr down here is actually going to now call forth the um, the vines to come out. <laughs> um, and that is its turn. Okay, the vines are just going to stay exactly where they are. Um, they seem to, like, wait. I don't know what that means. As we move through to the <laughs> Aside, he's going to attack you, Loretta. Of course it's going to attack you. 14. Miss. Misses as a spear kind of like swings, like pushes through and misses completely. Oh, actually, can I take the inspiration? I'm going to take the advantage on that. Wait, see. <laughs> Uh, do I have anything? Do uh, I have anything? Uh, he takes for no, nine, no, no. nine piercing damage. Thank you to my dog. Half my dog, thank you, my bread. As that gets rid of my uh, inspiration. I am down to three, but yeah. Oof. I'm so glad I go with you guys. Oh level boy. Three. Okay. Yeah. Illustrious. Illustrious realizes that in his absolute comfort that his measuring was off and he might have been looking at the wrong token. <laughs> um, oh, really? <laughs> yep. Yeah, don't worry about it. Um, so, uh, Illustrious is gonna, yeah, is gonna um, look round to um, to Clove and just say, "Get up!" <laughs> um, and it's gonna cast Aura of Vitality and a thirty-foot aura of like uh, of um, stars. It's just gonna spread out for thirty feet. Nice and. You get nine hit points. Amazing. Yay. Anybody else in She's that? Alive. Does, does L Loretta get that as well? Uh, I can use one bonus. I can use bonus action. So I action to cast it mm -hmm. and then bonus action to give it to one creature inside the aura. Gotcha. Uh, so that is that is my whole turn. Right. OK. Hey, Nora. Sorry, Clove. You are on an <laughs> island. <laughs> With a purple tree, yeah, what can I... a stick, and a child. What can I walk into a bar? What can I, <laughs> what can I see here? All right. So what you can see here is this very beautifully lush, life-giving water. Lovely tree. This okay. very out, un, like unworldly tr purple tree that is now starting to sh shed its leaves as soon as that the staff has been removed. Um, However, it doesn't seem to have affected anything round very much. Um, you can see that there is a number of like flowers and plants and things like this around you. Uh, the water looks very calm, tepid, but more importantly to you, it feels very life-giving. I'm going to say as a forest gnome... Yeah. Um, can you do an arcana check with advantage for me? Yeah. Not looking for a high number. 11. Good. <laughs> um, this could be 13 if advantage yeah. this could be the uh, knowledge or like a legend that you know of which is like the water also just known as the waters healing properties of the waters and you have a feeling this might be that very pond oh mate uh yeah you just see Nora sort of looking around and go no fucking way <laughs> and uh She's gonna try and get um, Chunna by the hand. Mm -hmm. He can keep his stick. Yeah. Uh, and um, step in together. Nice. So they step into the water. Um, you. I'm gonna roll a couple of d6s. Oh, sure. Okay, so you heal by five on your first five. Nice. As you walk into the water, you heal five. Perfect. How far did you move? 10 feet into the water? Yeah, just moved 10 feet there. Okay. Uh, although, is he still grappling me now he's got his stick? Uh, another seven. Nice. So, yeah, you get another seven on top of that. Great. Okay. Anything else you to do? Um... No, that, no, I'm all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call out to my party and be like, "Hey, look, that's the magic water!" <laughs> and suddenly, you appear next to the portal. 
uh, as he misty steps you over to that line, and then he pulls you ten feet through uh, as you hey. appear on the other side of the uh, of the thing. However, okay, the portal gets a bit smaller. Yeah, now ten feet wide. There's Loretta. Uh, hearing that, I think the best course of action is going to be use my action to disengage. Okay. And then run. Oh, God, I only get 25 feet because I haven't got little legs. <laughs> um, and <laughs> beginning to run uh, down. Uh, I think that's all I can do. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, cool. Clove. Okay, uh, Clove is going to get up uh, using half of her movement, and then she's going to cast Bonfire at the vines oh, in yes. front of the portal. Okay. So nice. What do we need from uh, here? It's a deck save. I will... TC 14. Oh, it's fine. So it takes half? I don't think it's even that. Uh, it's a cantrip. Oh. It's a cantrip. Yeah, yeah. It's oh. a suck. So no, it didn't take yeah. anything. Unfortunately. Anyways. Okay. Um, I think she is just going to move uh, towards the thing and then just like yell back to illustrious like we need to go <laughs> <laughs> hey satir gonna step in sorry not sorry comes in for the attack <laughs> 16. miss oh is <laughs> this like it's just like rapier sort of goes in for the attack as it runs you just sort of slide past it as you're running <laughs> <laughs> really nice. Okay, the vines are going to stay exactly where they are. Okay, this one's going to... Oh my god, they're going to have to attack you. You haven't shown any provocation yet, uh, Lustrious, so I don't think the Elsa is going to attack you. I'm going to use a short bow on Loretta. 15 does not hit, and it spins past you. Okay, Lustrious, you are... You still in the chat? Yes, you are still yeah. in the chat. <laughs> Lustrous is like, I know we gotta move. I'm stuck to this fucking chair. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and break out. I'm gonna try and break out. 20! Yes, you're yes. out. You're out. Uh, I'm out of this fucking chair. So I'm gonna go. Bye. I'm gonna go. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And I'm going to have my spiritual weapon attack. Um, how am I going to do that? No, let's let's go into full retreat mode. Let's let's uh, heal Loretta. Yeah, that's, in, uh, that's a good with... call. That's a good call. <laughs> I didn't want to ask. Seven. Thank you. Seven. <laughs> Actually, do you mind? Um, can I? Can I, instead of going to there, can I go to there? Oh, no, that's not going to move. To <laughs> there. Yeah. And just like, and just be like, fucking hate pan pipes. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Okay. I'll draw them away from Loretta. So right, I need to move this out of the way so they can actually make it smaller. And it's down to five feet. Oh, I didn't get a go on that one, Joe. Oh, did I not? Did you not? It booted me. It booted me because the round oh, I see. was four. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, so it's still your turn. I got beaten it's, by the round. It's ten feet. It is ten feet across, so you can still get across if you need to. Uh, cool. I'm not going to cross. I'm just. I'm going to um, just short bow the satyr so that he doesn't stab anyone on his way yeah, on the way get out. Advantage if of I this. can. Yep. Yeah. Twenty-two hits. The, let's, let's tick that button because we want to give see some sneak attack. Yes. That's minus mm. six. 
Plus nine. Oh my god, it's so Plus close. Nine. Not quite. Not <laughs> quite enough. <laughs> oh, so it's, this thing looks like it's gone through like six rounds with Mike Tyson. Is it absolutely screwed over? Um, yeah, but you not see it as quite. it goes. You see it land, and she's like, oh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Uh, yeah, as it then shrinks down to five feet. Oh okay. God, Loretta. <laughs> Okay. Um Okay. <laughs> Action to attack the one that's right next to us. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a crit. So, for the third time this evening. <laughs> Let's see the damage, because we've got to see the damage. Oh, uh, yeah. 16. 16, 16. yeah. Way. Loads. Oh. Plenty. So, what does that look like, please, my oh, friend? Oh, God, I'm, I'm running out of ways to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I think with this one, like, sort of as illustrious, uh, comes along and does the distraction as it just turns, just, like, sort of leans into a blade that's coming up and just going in and just goes straight into the chest and just quietly just kind of sinks in and just pushes back slightly and goes <clears throat> alright Lustrous we gotta go <laughs> <laughs> and I pull back out um, and with my movement I want to go 25 feet towards mm -hmm. moving through Illustrious's space with uh, halfling nimbleness I think it's referred to yeah. and can I take a long jump as I've moved over 10 feet yeah yeah, and absolutely. then jump through. Oh, perfect. Yes. Yay! Oh, let me move you over there so you keep you out of the way. Lovely. So you just sort of sprint it over, just leap. Sleep I don't even care lines. if it's not elegant. Like, I'll fall <laughs> forward if needed. <laughs> really, really lovely. So that's Loretta through. Okay, Clove. Uh, okay, I think. Clove is once again going to look at these vines and be like, out of the way! And so she's going to try bonfire again. Uh, so, yeah, DC 14 deck save. So the assassin vines does a deck save. Did you just assassin say assassin vines? vines. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a fail. That's a fail, so take nine. Yeah, they look healthy vines at the moment. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, they are not... Yeah, okay. So there's there's fire in that area. I don't know. Um, and then I think Clove is going to kind of look at Illustrious and be like... Basically, is going to misty step to the other side of the portal, but is like reaching a hand through, like ready to like grab him through. Oh, nice! That is great. I'm a big fan of that. Okay, so you kind of get to here then, yeah? Yeah. Okay. That here is dead, so that one can go. The vine is going to wait. The Alcide is going to go for an attack on Illustrious. With the short bow, it rolls a seven and it misses as it pings past. As illustrious suddenly sees the speed in front of it as the portal begins to close in front of them. This hand outstretched from their newfound friend of clove. Uh, is it an action to long jump? No, I mean it's part. Of, oh, we didn't do that. Or is it part, movement? We did it as part of movement last time for Stuart, so we're going to allow it. Okay, so just to, in the hope that it... So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run, and as I'm running, the, 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 the uh, stars that are out in my aura just like concentrate in and just push themselves and surround themselves around this assassin vine as I cast sleep at third level. <laughs> I'm gonna try and make this fucking thing go to sleep. 40 oh. hit points. 40? 40. Yeah, not enough. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> 
All right, and he's still running, and I'm just going to try and leap over the assassin vines. Yeah, great. So you leap over, your hand kind of goes over, and you grab onto this tiny little hand yeah. of clothes. And there's sort of like, as you grab hold of it, you see the, the like the dirt that's in the nails. Uh, and that freaks you out a little bit. But you grab onto the arm as you kind of, the <laughs> arms come through, it pulls through as the cloud begins to close around as you just pull your foot just out as it slips around your toe and the Feywild portal closes behind you. You look around you. And what's kind of is more interesting is the fact that the trees... And the plants around you seem less, a lot less dead than they did before. As this staff that he's holding in front of is holding in front of everybody is giving off this greeny sort of life moss energy. Clove, this is the first time you get to see the staff itself. Do you want to give me? Nature check or an arcana sure. check? It's up to you. Uh, Neither. I think they are the same. Yeah, guidance. I'll do a it. <laughs> guidance for you. Guidance. Great. I'll do a nature check. Uh, if, you get this, if you can get this over 10. Oh. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> this looks like a very old, gnarled, like, it seems as if it has a lot of druidic power. You have no idea what it is. That's the trick. <laughs> As he sort of he stands there, the child kind of like looks over towards the water that is starting to sort of clear. Uh, as he tries to sort of start, almost as if, as if he wants to go and plant it in the same place as it was before in the Fey Wild. As he continues forward, he slam. He walks through the water itself. His legs sort of coming. The water comes up to his armpits as he holds the stick above <laughs> his head. As he becomes closer and closer towards the altar, the sort of the light begins to kind of pulsate around this staff. As he turns and spins the staff of the woodland down into the stone itself, it forms and starts transcending into a purple tree. As the tree sort of grows around the stones and into the earth itself, as the, the branches grow up, these purple leaves spring out as this life-giving energy begins to seep out towards the wilderness. Both Clove and Illustrious, both of you start to feel that lift of darkness from you. For the first time in two days, you feel as if the sunlight might actually be able to hit you. The stars might be mm -hmm. able to hit you. As you'd suddenly hear the tweet of a robin and another starling. You hear the scurrying of, of uh, squirrels. As you look down at your feet, there are mice scurrying around on all of the grass as life begins to emerge back to this forest, starting with this small glade. As you all turn across to the west, you almost stood on a small hill as you can see over the tops of the forest itself, over towards the bridge. The bridge across the river, the choke point that you must, must cross. As the scene Fades through to black. Lovely. Ooh, 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 okay. Ooh, ooh. Well done, everybody. So good. So, so good. Well done, lovely lovely job, job. everybody. That's so good. Um, I'm really glad you had a good time. I had a lovely time. I really hope that you did as well. Uh, lovely moments of suspense there. I was particularly had a lot of fun with... Uh, with the chair, I have to say the chair has to be my favourite <laughs> thing of all of the session. Um, but something that we've started doing on this channel now is actually we quickly pop around and just sort of see what are fa people's favourite moments of role play or action and part of this of the session. So I'm going to ask you guys to kind of go around and say what you liked. Please on the chat, do say anything that you enjoyed as well. It would be great to see it on the chat as well. So I'm going to start with Stuart. 
What's your favourite thing you have today? Couple of moments. Firstly, the epic tidal wave, which if that hadn't gone off first off, we would have mm. had so much more like of like sort of a bad time because there would have been so many more involved. That was really, really nice. Love Bobbit. Yep. Uh, that was really fun. But also, yeah, I mean, like, so you just mentioned the illustrious in the chair, like, honestly, trying to get out of the chair like my dad on a Sunday, like, <laughs> like no, oh, oh, it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> that was really fun. Yeah, really, really lovely. Uh, so, yeah, as we'll move over to, to illustrious, illustrious the old man. Um, <laughs> dad, what was your favourite moment? Well, uh, um... <laughs> I I really enjoyed the the real sort of um, the change in everyone when uh, uh, when the shit hit the fan. Like if you look at the very start when we were all there, too scared to say anything, not wanting to engage with those two people on the horses. You know, Clove like looking to everyone for for help, and then and then going tidal wave, call lightning, <laughs> bonfire, <laughs> like how and how like um I like um. Uh, uh, Loretta and I've, I've completely forgotten everyone's name. What's what's your character name, Ryan? Nora. Uh, Nora. Nora no, yeah. Uh, as well. <laughs> so much. Like, so yeah, much stress. <laughs> um, Loretta and Nora. How like how there was there was much more of like a bonding with the group and sort of not not so much, and also and also unifying against the mission. It like everyone everyone mm. seemed to like focus in on like what we had to do. Maybe it was that really. I mean, beautifully told, but horrible section of the story that mm. uh, that sort of really brought us in. But I love that. It really felt like it didn't feel like, like a collection of individuals anymore. It felt like everyone had their role within it. Nice, nice. Mm. Let's talk about Nora. Let's move over to Rowan. Rowan, what was your kind of favourite moment? Uh, I've seen the image of like a little satyr just <laughs> dancing around in front of Nora, playing the like pan pipes and doing his best jig, and just <laughs> being absolutely immoved uh, was was a highlight. Like, also, the epic epic tidal wave uh, was still so good, um, and and Chana bringing the the forest back to life and all those sounds coming back in as well. I think is it was beautiful. Nice, 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 nice. Uh, thank you very much, and Melissa. I really loved right before the break, the little like flashback to everybody that chance to kind of role play that moment, learn a little bit more about these characters and like what motivated them to be a part of this in the first place. I thought that was really great. And then, yeah, I like really enjoyed like Loretta and Illustrious struggling against this charm and, and the, like helping up the prone. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, that's that's so such a good. Fun word. Yeah, so that's good. very funny. I think one of my favourites was um, as Clove being called out by Grim at the beginning and not moving. I actually, I was sort of stood there and I was like, shit, I've backed myself into a corner. But actually this is creating a lot of tension. It's like, it feels like they could, somebody could break at any point. So I really enjoyed I, I that. I was very close to doing so. I was like, do I like wild shape? Do I... Uh, I was like regretting not taking druid craft so that I could like do I was like running through like every possibility I could think of. So yeah, I was pretty close to doing something. Nice. I also just I, I really like the double fail on the navigation and having to circle back on yourself. That was kind of my favorite moments. Um I loved so many. I loved the I think another one of I liked is just a personal thing. I love pixies. I think they're brilliant. And just having the giggles in the background whenever they were trying to convince yeah. you to do something. So it's one of my personal favourites. But uh, uh, but I had so much fun playing with you guys. Um, there's a, a lot of things that I know some people would disagree with in that battle, but I agree with everything that happened in that battle. I thought that was wonderful and so much fun. And um, we're going to come back. I'm not sure when, but keep an eye on the social medias. Give us follows on our social medias. That includes our Facebook, our uh, YouTube, where you can go and pick up other episodes, especially the first episode of this particular show. Uh, you can also go onto our Twitter, our Instagram as well. So do give us quick follows on those or subscribes. Um, and if you were lurking in the background and enjoyed yourself, please give us a quick follow. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, if not, uh, make sure you come and join us next week for a bit of TPK death action. There will definitely be some death, whether that will be a beholder or the other team of players. We have no idea, but do join us then. Uh, until that point, 
Um, yeah, keep fighting up. Keep standing up and saying when things are fucking wrong because there's many things that are wrong. And always make sure that we share each other's warmth. And I shall see you guys next time here on the Arcade Ward. See you guys. Bye.